Right, let's begin. Hope you can hear me. My sound... I don't know if I can hear my mic, so please let me know if you can hear me. Oh, thank you for the raid, um, Ace. And thank you for the follow, uh, Lofty as well. Be on there. Hi guys. Um, yeah, my sound's a bit weird through my speakers for some reason, so I hope you can hear me. Oh, and thank you for the bits, Andy, as well. Um, I don't know why I've got no sound, but um, okay, as long as you can hear me, that's good. <coughs> Hello, everybody who's just joined with Hayes, and thank you to everybody who's come along with him, and hi to everybody else. So we've got Andy, Steps, Amok, Dr. Miz, Noop7, uh, Sakrak, Colt, Andy Magic Knight, um, Lost 80. Oh yeah, let me turn the music down a little bit, it's probably a bit high. Um, or me, or my bit bass heavy, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on, my sound's really screwed up tonight. Um, <clears throat> Could just be me. Could be me being tired, I don't know. Um, so if you've watched Hay stream tonight, you know what we're going to do tonight. It's going to be a little bit different to normal. So rather than look at one game, uh, we're going to look at a few different effects on a few things. Um, hence why Sublime is kind of empty here. I keep this open just so I can type some stuff in now and again. Uh your monitor on is in okay let me just check that because sounds like the mic be knocked or rattled yeah i've got a weird kind of interference as well i'm not hearing anything um check yeah it's all on okay um is it really bad? If it's really bad, I'll have a play around and see if I can adjust it. Um, it's not too bad, then carry on. I can always unplug my mic and plug it in again, see if that makes a difference. I turn my fan down, maybe that's... Oh. Okay, alright, let's begin then. So the first game we're going to look at is... Um, Witches 2. Hopefully the version I've got it's going to allow me to put cheats on so I can skip through to the various areas because there's a few things. So the main thing we want to look at is the snow effect, how that works. Um, but I'm also going to, um, yeah, let me just move my fan a little bit in case it's, because I, I have got my uh, mic on a stand. So maybe it's, maybe it's touching that or something. Um... I'll also turn the CRT effect off because the CRT effect looks awful um, on stream. So let me find that. I think it's that one there. Nope, wasn't that one. It's it is this one. There we go. Um, but I was doing some color blending um, tests and I needed to make sure that it was fine. So. Um, yeah. So we're going to look at the snow effect. I done there. Um, but I'm also going to go through some of the other effects on there because there is an awful lot um, of effects that, that could be explained, so I'll have a go. I mate, you, you're copying the ultimate method. <laughs> the the colour flickering on the intro. Oh, call, move the colour flickering score for good. I'm not going to do any um, actual hacks today. Um, we're just going to look into how these things work. Um, would do if this would load properly. There we go. Get on warp mode. So yeah, the the Roland Brothers really did like their um, their color effects. Wow, this is. Okay, that's a very cheap intro. Unlimited lives. Uh, yes, I'm going to go for unlimited, unlimited time. No, I'm not going to go for unlimited time. Uh, 
and this can press K, okay. <laughs> so it's a bribe off. So we'll have a quick look in, in Vice, um, and then we'll I'll try and ex explain what's going on. Um, actually, it's probably best if I just load this straight into the debugger, isn't it, really? Yeah, let's do that, actually. Let's load it straight. Uh... But as Hayes was playing this, I realised there are tons of effects in this game that could do with explanation. Um, so I'm going to do my best to try and explain as many of them as possible. How do I flip a disc in this? Let's have a look. There we go. Oh, that didn't work, did it? Um, hmm. <laughs> right, you know, while you lot fight over that, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a different copy of creatures because that that didn't work. So we're gonna look at creatures. I've also got um, Super Mario to look at as well, because that's a game that. Um, uses quite a lot of techniques to well, quite, uses quite a lot of techniques to, to do what it's doing um, otherwise they wouldn't have been able to do uh, the effects that they're doing in that hopefully it's, it's the same one because it does seem like it is It's not the same one, okay. Um, I've got no... I can't hear any music at all. Oh, thanks for the sub, Axnafin. Appreciated. Uh, I don't hear any sound from my stream. All the monitor's broken. I can't hear anything. Um, I can hear the um, alerts, but that's because OBS itself is, is doing those, but yeah. Oh yeah, it is September, isn't it? Keep forgetting about that. Uh, okay, so press space for the CBM to proceed to the game. Where's the CBM key in this? No, I want the CBM key. Where is the Commodore key on this? Okay, it's Alt. Kind of make no sense. Do I want infinite lives yet? Time. No, no, I don't care about that. So the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the intro for this because there's quite a few effects going on in the intro as well. What? This teaches. This will teach me not to uh, prepare ahead of time. I was so busy messing around with my um my multiplex that I didn't bother to look at this version properly. I assumed it would just work. I guess not, so let's try one more. I will find a version eventually. <sighs> okay, let's try that one. Yeah, if this doesn't work, it might be worth it might be worth passing them on to me if you could, Hayes. That's my suggestion. Open that door. Close down my suggestions room. So, a good start. This is a very good start. We're, we're fifteen minutes in. I've done it. doesn't seem to be doing anything. There's nothing going on down here. 
Yeah, Hayes, if you have got a version, if you could uh, pass it to me over Discord or something, that'd be great. Because this is now three versions, and it's not... not uh, Oh, thank you for the gift sub as well, Hayes, and uh, welcome to the sub club. I guess that's in this. Yeah, you get you get now get the shallow dock um, emote. You know what's missing though. You know why why these things happen. Happening when this happens. Um, yeah, this isn't working, is it? Thank you for the sub just as well. Some sub crazy tonight. Thank you for all the bits as well, guys. Um, okay. I'm going to try one more. Um, Creatures 2. There's got to be a version on here. Maybe I'll just take the easy flash version. It's going to load the quickest, that's for sure. Flash. I realise it's not 100% um, correct, but it should be enough for doing these. Uh, actually, it should be enough for doing the these uh, dissects. I'm not seeing it. Why am I not seeing that? Now? They removed it. That's a shame. Uh, it's not that. Guys, you're all crazy. You're, you're you're tipping bits, and nothing's actually happening yet. You're all you're all absolutely mental. Um, let's just try the top one. This is creature. That's the first creature. That... Let's go for that one. I'm just picking random ones now. Okay, let's give that a reset again. Go. Looks like it's on one disc as well, which is different. Is correct. Whoa. Okay. This time, yes. This five. I don't really care, let's if we get into it. Okay, it's definitely loading something. There we go. Okay, so right, so let's slow it down and let's have a look in this mode. Let me bring up chat so I can see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, but I mean by this time in the previous dreams I'd have done way more. Um Okay, so let's look at each bit as we go along. So let's have a look at this high score table first. So let me let me pause it. Um, so first thing we see is that the the giant text is actually all sprites. So there's a multiplexer going on here. Um, it's using three sprites for the the name, five sprites for the score, and the top row of sprites is stretched in the in the Y axis to make it bigger so it stands out um, and then the background the the fuzzy that's dancing around is just made up of um, characters and I'm guessing that all they're doing is changing the color ram and that these characters are actually animated so if we go and have a look at the uh, oh, just press quit I don't believe it this is not going well But remember, Control F4 is not the same as Control F4 on a Mac. Right. 
Yeah, 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 come on. Thank you for the bits, everyone. Seriously, it's a kind of crazy, crazy bidding war for first place going on. Ah, yes, thank you, Dr. Mids. I'm really looking forward to that, actually. Okay, let's pause this one. Um, yeah, so I just on, yeah, last night, actually, um, all the very early hours of this morning, uh, won a PC engine on eBay, and I'm really looking forward to it. I've got the EverDrive cartridge as well with it, so I can load all the ROMs on it. Um, but I'm really looking forward to playing uh, Parasol Stars. I'll probably play it on stream as well. It has got a uh, RGB mod in it as well, so I can plug it into my OSSC. Beam it. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So the this is the intro screen, quite simple. A uh, couple of splits. There's a font split here, somewhere uh, around about here. You can see where it's flickering between the two. Um, they're using some kind of scrolling mechanism to scroll stuff on we'll take a look at that as it moves i think this might be uh the vsp scroll that the the rest of the creatures games use um it's not though it's just a normal scroll um sprites down here i believe there's some text as well that will appear there we go and so the sprites just here appear behind um, well, actually, they're the same color as the background almost, so... I oh, know they're f flashing, but I think they, they appear behind this text they show in here, and then, then the text itself has a color split on it. <coughs> it is 6502 compatible. Well, it's, it's kind of an enhanced version of the 6502. So let's see if I can find out where this... Uh, it is Control F4, not Alt F4. Alt F4 is what I was pressing incorrectly. Um, yeah, the, the PC Engine is the uh, HU65CO2, which is very similar to the... Um, uh, it's very similar to the 6502, but with a few extra commands. It also has an insane amount of uh, video RAM memory as well. So, um, Okay, so what I'm going to look at is these here. So you see these coloured squares. I don't think they're actually... Um, being changed other than the, the color. I don't think anything in this this square is being changed um, So somewhere on here. It's probably these ones here actually um, We should see one of these fade out to like the diamond shape as, as the As the fuzzy disappears Try and pause it um, I don't see where that's happening, but I th think it's got to be somewhere in here. I don't see it. Oh, there it is. See that? So this highlighted one here. Um, that's being animated, basically. So, so when I restart, you see it disappear, and that saves having to. Um, that's the right one. There we go. Saves having to do anything um, like copy screen ram around. So it's a nice, quick, quick way to do things. Okay, so this was the screen uh, Hayes pointed out. We wanted to know about the sprites on here. Um, so let's let's have a look at that in the in the Vic register. Um, it is sprites, definitely. Um, so it's using a multiplexer, um, fairly decent one as well. Where it looks at things, it looks like it's doing about eighteen sprites or so, sixteen, eighteen sprites. Um, but there's a split up here for these, which means these fuzzies will always kind of peak at around this point so they don't interfere with these. Um, and then it's just using a multiplexer to go through them and there's, there'll be a space in memory with lots and lots of these sprites. Okay, we can go and have a look at that. Uh, 6,000 roughly. So scroll this down to... It's hard to tell in here, but there there are lots of sprites in there. Characters and... All sorts of stuff going on. In fact, if we open this up in um, Infiltrator, we'll be able to see that. But unfortunately, I'm not sure how it, we'd have to save out the memory. From, so we'll do that at a later date. Uh, the other thing that's interesting about this screen actually is uh, this text here. Um, the, the character mode that it's using is actually um, the extended character mode. You see this EXT here. Um, uh, it's uh, I think it's called extended color mode. 
and what that does is it allows you to change the background for each um, for each square um, the one of three or four colors I think um, so you can you can actually have, you'll see when I start it it has a different background so even though it looks black here um, when I start this they can create these fuzzies out of characters by coloring the background in the various squares um, so it creates a nice effect it looks like you've got kind of three layers going on but all it is really is each each character is being colored in one of well, three colors you can see well four colors actually black and the three grays as well it creates a nice effect um, now they can still scroll the colors through these we've done that on the um, on the design stream uh, on the game design stream before now so that's how that's done it's um, same technique just different color ramp uh, let's just catch up with this chat uh, okay you go yeah if you if you're looking for uh, an intro to 6502 if you don't mind spending one dollar or two dollars, whatever it is, then I've got some PDFs, uh, which are kind of an accompaniment. They started off as an accompaniment to the the stream that I do on Saturdays, um, but they've become a little bit more detailed. Um, they, they go into go into things in a lot more detail than I have time to do on on stream. And yeah, if you if you join my Discord as well, there's there's plenty of um, people on there that can help you and people are always posting links and, and sharing code snippets and stuff so um, and you can always ask for help as well I'm always happy to help as, as are most people on the channel as well um, okay so that's kind of it for the intro I think there's only those three areas I believe you can see how they, they've kind of taken they've taken the, the extended mode and done something really kind of original with it it looks really nice um, extended mode has a has a problem in that um, it uses the extra two colors um, by so if you if you had a normal character you could define one of 256 characters um, by using numbers from zero all the way up to 255 um, but in and that's normal color so that's multicolor and high res mode they both have 256 characters however in extended character mode these two actually define the color so you only have 64 characters so it's enough for doing things like like they've done there a font um, with an alphabet but the uh, the top two bits of that um, that character ID is actually the color that it's going to use in the background and then that colors defined by uh, let me find the memory map for you again um, so that color is defined by the memory map at. There we go. So here you've got these extra three. So you've got your normal background color, which is the one we we're used to using. And when you're in extended character mode, these two bits point to point to these um, extra colors. So you can set three extra colors. So in in the creatures intro, they've got, as I say, they've got the three grays and the black as well. Um, cool. All right, let's let's go into the game. I'm hoping I can skip a little bit because I don't want to. I want to play through every. Oh, oh, pressing all the wrong buttons. Right, I need to. When this loads up, I actually need to take um, a snapshot so I don't keep doing that. This is why I take snapshots because I'm constantly pressing the wrong buttons. Bring my chat up again. I'm sure I'm missing. Something. And the sprite fountain is lookup tables. Yeah, the the sprite fountain will be. Um, I imagine what they'll have is they'll have a table which has kind of a sine wave to, to go up and down, uh, and maybe a few different ones to go left and right. And so I'll pick one at random, um, and then and, and move the sprites along that path. Uh, same way I've done my the, the multiplexer on the intro. You'll see it again when I do the uh, the be right back. Um, double check. It takes a few seconds until it works, so take it easy. Problem is I don't know what that button is. I'm I'm hoping that is backspace. 
Yeah, I think I need to do a debugger tutorial, to be honest. I'm constantly pressing the wrong things. I should probably print out the um, the shortcuts and stick them up there somewhere. So I can just look and do it. But considering I've been doing this, what, nine weeks now, um, and I still don't remember the right keys to press, it's quite bad. So I think, I think that is my snapshot, right? And I'm going to fill all my snapshot spaces with that. I just detached the drive image, whatever that means. I'm gonna put it back in. Oh. Cool, half an hour in and we've managed to look at the intro. At least we've looked at something. You still have those 3D, yeah. Uh, well, some weeks I drink. I drink every week. It's a Saturday I'm drinking. Um, I guess once I get to... How many followers am I on, actually? I'm on 293. I guess I should do something similar to Hayes. And when, once I get enough followers, do some kind of long stream. And if I do that, I will definitely be drinking. It'll be a Saturday night. It will be right through to the morning. And I'll be extremely drunk by the end of it. All good. I do want to uh, stream um, either PC Engine if I get it in time, which I don't think I will, um, or if I don't, I'm going to stream my GPD on um, on Saturday night. Thank you for the follow, Sacrack. Okay, let's let's start this. Let's start the game. Let's turn on the joystick. Right, we're in. Um, actually, this is an interesting thing to look at as well. Stream of wine. Yeah, I did. I did seven and a half hours actually on on Saturday night. It was kind of impressive. Um, but I will do. I will do a long, longer one. I will do like a twelve-hour stream at, at some point. Maybe when I get three hundred followers. Um, don't know. I don't know yet. It won't be all. It won't be all coding. There'll be play. Once I get drunk enough, I think I'd just rather play games. And I really enjoyed playing Mimiga last time as well. Okay, let's have a look at this this effect then. So this is about what you'd expect, really. It's just a, a row of sprites going along. Some characters flashing on and off. Another row of sprites going down here, and then oh, that's that's interesting. The way you can do it if you. Catch the raster before it changes the sprite. Just have lots of fuzzies dancing around the bottom. But what actually is there is the, the bonus and score. 24 hour assembler would be hard, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know, maybe one day. 24 hour game jam, that would be interesting actually. That would be a fun, fun stream. So you've got 24 hours and you have to make some. Up. The problem is, is I spend a lot of time explaining stuff, and I think I don't want to stop doing that. If it was just me coding for 24 hours, I wouldn't be talking very much. I'd just be, um, with the pressure of making a game, I would just be kind of hammering away at it and not really focusing on, on chat or anything, or even talking. It'd be quite boring. Yeah, we do have flu bits as well, so that would be interesting. Okay, let's let's pause again here. So, it's about what you'd expect for the sprites on this level. Um, the the main guy down here is sprites. The the rocks are sprites. Obviously, Clyde is sprites. I'm not sure what that sprite is, but there is a sprite there apparently. I don't see anything there. Um, okay, there's another one here as well. Maybe it's these bullets. They're just not. They're just not showing up. Um, the sprites up here for the platforms um, and fireball and that. But interestingly, up here, we've also got sprites in the border. So they've opened up the border. And I'll explain how they've done that in a second. Um, and actually, as you play on, you will see. I think Hayes mentioned this. In fact, you can see him in this. You can see him here in the sprite uh, list. Um, you can see some birds animated and they will animate on the screen there you go you can see them coming in from the side so there's two two copies of them and they just 
very fucking down. Very simple effect, but it's very, very effective. And then down here you've got sprites in the border as well. Um, they have the conveyor belts animated with simple character animations. Um, and there's a color split as well, so you can see everything above here is a blue background um, with pink pink and yellow rocks, pink, yellow and brown rocks and then actually it changes there as well there's a pink, yellow and brown rocks there then it gets to here and they go brown and yellow and then you get to here and the background changes to grey and that's it for colour splits it's the same all the way down there uh, interestingly there's a mix of high res and low res graphics in here as well so you can see the, the uh, clouds are high res the branches on the, the trees here are high res. Um, let's try to see if there's anything else in here. Maybe this text here. Look, yeah, I think this text is high res as well. Yeah, definitely is actually. So it's really, really good use of the of the and and these chains actually. Really good use of the mix of two. Um, one in the top left corner is used for sprite sync. Yeah, it can be. So uh, you can stabilize. Um, you can stabilize IRQs by using um, sprites like that, um, right? By deliberately drawing one um, over a over a bad line. Um, I'm dead, so I need to read that again. So I'm going to explain the sprites, uh, the the border split, and what happens. So you've probably seen. Let me pause this. Let me open up Vice. Let me remember what the uh, what the. In fact, I can just look it up. That's probably easier. Uh, I think it's D016, but I need to check. No, it's not D016, it's the other one. Uh, D011. There we go, which is 53265, and it's bit 3. Just remember these values, so that would be 27. And so that would be 23, okay. So if I poke this value, what you'll see uh, is the screen gets one row shorter. Um, and if I put the value back, it, it gets one row higher. Now that's used mostly for, for scrolling the screen vertically. If you don't hide the bottom row when you scroll, things will, um, things will kind of flicker and appear on there. By hiding that bottom row, you can ensure that the things scroll off the top neatly and scroll into the screen from the bottom or vice versa, depending on which way you're going. Um, so they added this this trick in to hide that row. They do the same thing horizontally as well, uh, but we'll just focus on this one. Um, so the way it works is what happens is when the Vic gets down to the last row before it needs to start drawing the border, it, it flicks a flag to say, I'm, I need to draw the border now. Um, and so if you can trick it into not flicking that flag, you can get it to stop drawing the border down here. And the way you do that is you wait for the raster to get right down to this line um, with the screen in in the 25 row mode. You wait for it to get right down to here. Then when it gets to here and it's gone past the 24th row, you quickly change it back to um, 24 lines. And so what that does is the raster never actually reaches the border edge. It never knows it's got to that border edge because it's already gone past where it should be. It's down here now. Um, and you've changed, you've kind of forced it to ignore that by, by flicking that border behind where the raster is. Um, and once once you get past that bottom line, you can flick it back again, ready to do it again. So you only have to do it once uh, per frame. But what it does is it opens this, this bottom border here and the top border here. Um, there's a similar effect you can do with a horizontal thing as well by switching between 38 and 40 rows um, but you have to do that on every line which is is quite difficult to do and and definitely difficult to do inside a game anyway um, so it's that simple really um, there's not a lot to it um, but the effect is you can essentially put sprites down here um, as I think I showed in in one of the streams I can't remember which stream it was now uh, you can also get character data down there but it, it's it's very limited in what you can do um, so it's you can get a single character repeated four times um, and before you can change it again so it's not it's not good I mean you couldn't write anything down there um, but you could use it for some kind of effects down there and you can still shift it and, and wobble it and do do the sort of things 
um, you would do normal with text. Um, likewise, you can do it at the top as well. Um, so there's there's a lot of cool demo effects that can be done um, by utilizing that. For games, though, generally it's just used for sticking sprites in the border. Uh, so what they've done in this game, they've got one sprite for the score, five sprites for the uh, sorry, one sprite for the lives, five sprites for the court, uh, score, and then two sprites uh, which are stretched horizontally to to make the word bonus. Um, and because they're sprites, you can do cool things like you can animate them very very easily up and down like that. Um, something that would be quite difficult to do with characters. Um, and in the top, they can they can just change the color to match the background. Um, so they stretch that that color all the way up to the top, so the screen looks taller. Put a nice sun background in uh, sun sprite in there, and a few birds flapping around, and it looks like the the border is kind of quite detailed. It's a it's a clever, simple but clever effect. Okay, um, I'm going to try and skip past this level now. Hopefully this works. If anybody knows what the back arrow button is in... Um, in... What's it called? The debugger. Then please let me know, because I have no idea what it is. Oh. Seem to be that. There seemed to be something down here. I don't, I'm not sure what I pressed, but okay. So pause again. It was another nice effect. So there's another multiplexer going on here. Um, this one looks very, very impressive, but it's actually quite simple. Um, so again, it's using. Um, I'll get that to move again. I'll just have to click manual. I don't know why it's doing that. So there's six sprites in each row of the character um, with the text that's moving up the screen, uh, or up to six sprites. So it just draws a font, it just draws the number of stars that it needs to display that font. Um, and then for every split, there's all up to two clouds which can move horizontally, and the clouds are just stretched X Y. Um, so when it all comes together, it looks kind of cool. You've got got quite quite a lot of clouds moving across the screen, and you've got a lot of stars moving up the screen as well. And you know. Oh, technically at any one point you could have well, let's let's pause it and have a look one two three four five six seven eight forty eight sprites forty eight star sprites moving up the screen and it's pretty easy to do because all they have to do is move the y position and turn them on and off that's all they have to do they don't have to change the sprite pointers for these um they just have to move move them in the y axis uh, and turn them on and off they don't have to change the X position. Um, it might even be that it's... Where's the X position? X, 1, 1, 3, 4, 3. Yeah, see, they're not even... They're not even using um, sprites that go over 2, 5, 6. They're, they're just using in the normal uh, screen space as well. Okay, cool. All gone weird again. My OBS is playing up something wrong. Can you guys still hear me alright? Oh man. Can. Okay, cool. Yeah, my OBS is being really strange. I might have to look into this tomorrow. Um, yeah, cool. So let's, let's start that again. Let's Carry on. So it's quite simple. The the rest of this is just flashing colours in colour ram. Um, nothing too complex. There's fire. Hopefully that. Can... Go. So we'll skip that. We've seen that before. Oh, the the sprites have gone funny on this one. I'm not sure why. Um, I'm going to skip this level anyway. This is relatively straightforward. There's nothing that special going on here. Um, not that you could see anyway, so yeah, I'm just going to skip that one. I would if I could find the button again. That. <laughs> oh, where is the button? Thing is, it did say as well it might take some time. So, what happened then? 
ってポーズをする。It might be broken. Oh, this is not good, is it? Um, the main effect I want to see is a little bit further on. Oh, run stop pauses. Problem is, what was run stop? I don't know what run stop is in here. Uh, oh, a raid from Amiga Bill. Thanks, Amiga Bill. Thank you for the raid, and welcome to everybody that's come along from Amiga Bill stream. Hi, Mike. Welcome to the stream. Um, we're just wondering where the hell the the, the run stop button is in the uh, in the C64 debugger, because I pressed it and now I can't get back. Oh, there we go. Um, I'm still not finding level skip though. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. I think it is escape, but um, I'm trying to get off this level. I'm either going to have to complete this level, which I really don't want to have to do. Um, but I can't do. My characters are all, all messed up. Um, or I need to find the skip button, which I can't seem to find, so... Um, I cannot find the... Where's the skip button? If anybody can find out where the back arrow is for the C64 debugger, I'd be very grateful. Um, I'm going to have a quick look in the manual myself. Uh, oh, no, no, assembly view. It's gone kind of slightly wonky so far, this. So. Thank you for the follow, Colin Veyer, uh, and thank you for the follow, Retro Red one as well. Welcome to the stream, guys. So on the Commodore 64, there is um, like a, a backwards arrow key. Um, I'm just trying to work out what that key is in the C64 debugger. Unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to map any of the keys, so uh, and it's not showing up in there. But this isn't the best version of creatures. For a start, all the sprites are, are corrupted, and none of my None of my buttons seem to be advancing me to the next level like I want them to. Um, I thought it was one of these, but it doesn't appear to be. Going well. Oh, there we go. So that could possibly be over there. But it did say actually that the um, level skip can be a bit slow, so I could be pressing it and. Um, doing something completely different over this side of the keyboard and then three seconds later when I'm pressing it, it activates. Thank you for the sub, Brother Bill. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so we're on to the next we're on to the next level. So hopefully the snow effect isn't knackered like the um the interludes. The interludes look really broken. I think this is a snow effects level now, so we we shall see. It is. Okay. So, let me take some snapshots before we start. <laughs> Do not want to lose where we're at now. Okay, it's it's perfectly fine. Okay, so let's have a look at how this works. Uh, thank you for the follow, Bro Bryce 64 I like the 64 on the end, that's good. So this effect kind of amazed a lot of people when it came out um, because it is such a smooth effect and, and it works really really uh, well with with um let me pull. oh it's I tell you what it's a good job I did take a snapshot isn't it uh, it works really really well with no slowdown um, from what I know reading the the game diaries for this as well um, the John Rollins did spend quite a lot of time getting this exactly right and optimizing it um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this works. I've got my snapshot now, so I can keep coming back here and having a look. Um, so let's start by having a look at the character set, because I think that's where the interesting stuff is going to be. Um, let's bring the character screen set up wherever that is. Once again, every button but the one I want. There we go. Let's load my snapshot up again. Start. Okay, so the first thing we can notice, 
of snow in the in the character set. You can actually see it animating uh, here. So what's happening is these characters, these are kind of dotted around the screen in various places. Um, and they're arranged in such a way that when they're animated individually in these uh, in these squares and, and copied all over the screen, it creates a kind of tiled pattern animation. So, your settings say the apostrophe is the back arrow. Okay. Okay. Well, there's there's two apostrophes, so I'll I'll, I'll check out one of them. But we're at the right we're at the right screen now, so it's not too bad. Um. So I'm actually intrigued as to how these are being animated. So um, they're obviously all characters. You can see where I've actually just where I just pressed that that button. I wish I'd have put infinite time on there. Um, you can see when when I pick one uh, and I pick the right color, I can draw snow all over the place. And because I'm just drawing the same one, uh, the pattern the pattern breaks basically. Um, so it's, it's very specifically has to be in this particular order. Um, let's see if we can figure out where that code is. Um, to, the, to the left of the one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did try that one, but then I went around the whole thing as well. So, um, like In fact, let me try and reset, because now I know that. Let me restart the, the thing and let me do it with um, infinite lives and time on as well. That would help. Uh, yes, and for those who've come along with um, Amiga Bill and, and don't know what we do here, this is the, the Thursday Night Dissect stream. Um, normally we just do one game, but tonight we're going to um, look at a few different games and see how they work. Um, starting with Creatures, as you can, you can see. Um, and then on Saturdays we do a game collaboration stream where we're working on a single screen arcade game. Um, for eventual release to the scene um, and that's a collaborative effort with with everybody on stream the code is shared with everybody um, we, we talk about every single line of code as we go through it um, and all the code is done on stream actually saying that that's not entirely true this week I've done some optimization around the around the sprites um, the software sprites that we did at the weekend uh, but it's taken so long to optimize it it made no sense to, to do that on stream it would have been quite a boring stream um, but on the next Saturday uh, stream, I will go through what I've done um, and explain it in some detail. Okay, it says it takes some time, so I'm going to press it once and I'm just going to wait. Yeah, I have been a bit sneaky this week, but I'll, I'll go through everything I've done. It's, it's, it's gone through a few iterations, so it would have been it would have probably taken two or three streams to do um, what I'm doing. Um, none of those have worked, so I'm going to press some ones up here and wait a second. Oh, there we go. Right, I pressed them up in this corner, so I'll just keep pressing those ones. And with the dissect stream, we, we look to... Yeah, yeah, I think it's the apostrophe on the other side. Uh, with the dissect stream, we usually look to improve a game or add cheats. Um, but this time we're just looking at um, particular effects in games. I would hope that the timer, there is still a timer internally, Andy. Um, I'm hoping so anyway. I don't know why this isn't loading. Broken it. Him. And yeah, it will all get into the PDFs as well. So in addition to the, the coding stream on Saturday, I do a PDF version, which is a kind of slightly more in-depth version of the, of the stream uh, in detail. Not having a good look with this game at all. Uh, that's available to my patrons, which I'll put a link to in here. Um, there's no min. Well, the minimum is I think it's one dollar and one dollar processing fee, um, but you get access to what's currently about 140 pages of uh, assembly tutorials, um, which basically follow what we're doing on stream. So they should allow you to make the same game as we're making on on stream just by reading those documents. Um, and it's going quite well. I think we've we've got a really nice idea for the game. Um, it's going quite well. The, the features are going in as as I want them to go in. Um, and I think people are kind of getting getting into the ideas. 
I did intend on doing a vote on the names this week, but I've just not had time with, with a lot of other things I've been doing, so I will get around to that at some point. Uh, we have a list, a rather long list of, of names that we, uh, I don't know which one it is, it's one, oh, there we go, I think it's just Backspace. But we, uh, yeah, we have a long list of uh, names that we need to whittle down. <laughs> I have no idea which one it is, but it's one of these six keys, so we're getting somewhere. Uh, so it seems like putting infinite time on actually breaks the thing, so let's just go back to the, the thing we had before. Thanks for the bits, Hayes. What are those? Those Subway sandwiches? Is that because it's September? <laughs> uh, that's kind of funny. I'm glad you like the PDFs, Carl. I do put a lot of work into them, and I, I, I really, really enjoy doing them. As, as stressful as they can be, sometimes I really do enjoy doing them because I know that I know how hard it was for me um, trying to learn this, and I'd, I'd have loved to have had something um, to, to read from uh, from a beginner's point of view um, back then, but I didn't. So. Um, I, I can I can see why they're probably quite well appreciated. I uh, thank you guys for all the kind words with them as well. Okay, so let, let's pause it before we go any further. Let's see if we can figure out how this is being done. So, um, if we go and have a look at the code for this, but we're gonna we're gonna see if we can find out. Not see, I nearly pressed Alt F4 then. We're gonna have a look to see if we can find out. Um, where these characters are being written. Um, but the character set itself is at 5800, so let's go and have a look at the... Um, let's have a look at the font itself and work out which character in the font it is. Here we go again, I'm not able to find, there we go. So it's these characters here, uh, if I animate them, so yeah, it starts at this one, uh, which it doesn't seem to want to tell me what character number that is. I'm going to have to work it out, which is a bit annoying. Uh, so, two, three, four, please, oh, five, six. There's 32 across, uh, so it's 64 plus, well, 64, let's have a look at 16, and we can work our way back, because I think that one's animated as well, actually, looking at it. Yeah, it is. Okay, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 1, 2, 3, so 74. Okay, so we know it's 74 characters in, and there are 8 bytes in each character, and in hexadecimal that's 250. Um, what am I missing? I heard something. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's the bit battle going on. Thank you for the bits, guys. It's appreciated. Um, 250. So we know that the, the font is at, what was it again? I think it was 5800. So we're looking at 5A50. So let's have a hunt through the code, anything that changes 5A50. Uh, in fact, we can do this with breakpoints. We don't need to hunt through it. Let's just stick a breakpoint in. Um, 5A50. Nope. 5A50. Let's mix FF. Cool. Now, when we start, we should get a breakpoint at some point. I think it has. Although, it's done that annoying thing where the breakpoints don't match what's going on, so I'm going to have to restart again. Ah. <sighs> At least we know what we're looking for now, and I've got the got the correct pad. I don't need to do anything. I can just load it up. There we go. Uh, so we're looking for the value of five a fifty um, changed to anything less than or equal to zero. Go. So let's give that a try. Turn the joystick back on. 
straight away it's broke and there we go see we've got we've got some something changing these values um, this one looks like it's just clearing those values uh, it doesn't seem to be doing anything special yeah it's just clearing some values so let's skip over that bit uh, And we have another location here. So here they're using zero page, but once again, I, remember, I don't know if anybody remembers from the um, Creatures 1 stream, um, John Rowlands didn't use the, the zero page very much, and he's, it, again, it's very empty down here again. He's not doing very much with it at all. Um, however, he is using it to, um, you see here, he is using it as a di indirect reference to the, the snow points. Because this is obviously going to create a, a much faster, faster routine, um, and it looks like he's loading. He's loading a value from. Oh, okay. So he's he's doing very, pretty much what we're doing with our software sprites. That is, he's taking the value um, from the character set. He's oaring it with whatever's on screen by the looks of thing. I'm imagining that's a screen reference. Um, no, it's not. There must be another buffer that he's copying to. So we'll go and have a look at that in a second. So this 8824. Let's go and have a look at that. This looks like it's possibly snow effects going on here. So if I'm, I'm going to start it and if we watch then they should animate, which they are doing. He's animating the snow in memory outside of the char set. And then he's using uh, the same technique that we're using to, to map our um, software sprites onto the screen um, by oaring the data in the character set with this snow. So he's basically superimposing lots of snowflakes on top of each other. Um, and then I'm guessing somewhere else these are animated. So there's probably another reference to these 8824 somewhere um, that's, that's causing an animation there. So it's quite a simple effect. So it sounds like what's happening, there's a couple of snowflakes which are animating in this area in memory. And you can see these are all individual snowflakes. They they don't seem to be crossing over. They're just they're just flakes that are floating down. You see each one floating a little bit differently to the last one. Um, and then for every character in the character set, he's taking a snowflake and he's blending it with another snowflake. At a different point but you get this effect of them crossing over each other as you can see there um, and then by doing that in a block but you can kind of see the pattern repeating so if you you find like this pattern here you can see that repeating all over the place it's just a matter of placing these in the the correct places and the pack in fact that whole thing there is a repeating pattern um, yeah, and it just creates creates that same beautiful effect without without it having to, you know, if you did this with modern um, techniques, then these would all be individual sprites, um, or they would you'd be using a shader, full screen shader, to do some kind of post processing processing effect on the screen. Um, but they did this with a one megahertz CPU with all the other stuff going on as well. Very very impressive for the time. Um, See, is there anything else interesting going on here? Oh, so there's another border split going on up here as well. Um, so you can see they've opened the borders up here, and all they've done this time is made the border white to create this kind of feeling that there's a massive cloud up here, um, and then stuck some characters um, along here that Clyde can go behind. So if I avoid getting hit, you see he can go behind some and not behind others. Um, and that's probably achieved by creating so when you have a sprite um, and you have uh, multicolors and you set the sprite to go behind um, the characters what happens is it only goes behind certain colors so you will get you will get made I can't remember which colors it is I think it goes behind the main sprite color and one of the multicolors but not the other multicolor so you get you get one multicolor that's that's always behind the sprite no matter what you do and then the other two the sprite can go behind 
So by setting one multicolor to white and a foreground to white, you can have him basically slide between uh, two layers within the same character. Um, thank you for the follow, Mitsuyama. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, so that's that's a kind of nice effect as well because that's that creates the illusion that there's there's two layers here when actually it's just one layer of characters, uh, but drawn with two different um, uh, two different uh, kind of colors in the multicolor, but they're just both set to white. Um, so the one that appears behind, I'm going to see if I can find that character actually because I want to I want to show how. It, in fact, you can see it there. If I move down here where the multicolors have changed, you can see how one multicolor on this top row here um, is actually is brown. So it's it's actually multicolor two looking at that. Uh, <laughs> and the other one is the foreground color white. So by using multicolor two, Clyde will always appear in front of that. But and then when you use the the, uh, the, the single sprite color, he will appear behind that. Um, so it's a really, really good use of that. Um, that technique as well. Um, I think they use it somewhere else actually. I think they use it for the fuzzy stage as well. There's some plants in the foreground and I think they're drawn with a different set of multicolors so that he appears behind them and uh, the fuzzies appear behind them. Just the feet I think that's it. Um. <laughs> the only reason cockroaches will survive nuclear war is because they'll hide inside the C-64s. As long as they hide kind of near the RF unit and the cartridge port. If they hide anywhere near the SID chip, they're screwed. The SID chip will fry them eventually. Right, I'm going to take five minutes, guys. Um, and then when we come back, we'll, we'll have a quick blast through the other levels, see if there's anything of interest. Um, and then we'll move on to the next game. We're going to look at uh, Super Mario, uh, Super Mario 64 um, next for the Commodore 64. Super Mario Brothers 64 by Zero Page. So it's it's the Commodore 64 version that was released. Um, it was this year, wasn't it? It was earlier this year. Uh, we'll we'll have a look at that and see how how that was achieved. Um, so I'll be right back in about five minutes, guys, and you can enjoy my my multiplexer again. I'll be right back, guys. Yes, it is indeed the multiplexer was messing with I wanted to to add something to I'm going to add a little something to the uh, to the, the screens um, maybe not every week but I'll try and try and add something different so eventually they'll be almost demo like in themselves so um, yeah when what I should have been doing as Hayes correctly says is actually uh, no black ball there. yeah I could have put a thing is I did it with a black uh, with just blank squares at first uh, so I took the black out because I couldn't see them. And now I could have put a black ball in because I actually drew a ball as well. So, yeah. yeah. But as Hayes said, I should have probably been spending the time actually preparing uh, for this stream a little bit better. Right, let's see if I can... Nope. See if I can quickly skip to the next level. Okay, so... It's one of these buttons. Well, I thought it was one of these buttons, and now they're not working. Or maybe it is that apostrophe button, and it just takes blooming ages. Hey, Thalamus Digital. Welcome to the stream. How you doing? We're looking at all the various effects in, in Creatures 2, and my god, there's a lot of them. Um, I'm trying to get the level skip to work so we can get to the next level. This is not the best copy of this. Maybe I'll land on that thing. No, I'm going to miss. Do you have focus on that window? I do have focus on that window. Let me go into this mode. It's a bit easier to, to see what's going on without all the flickering stuff going on. So let's load it up again. Let's get in. Turn joystick off. 
Yeah, it's not. It's not having. It's not having it. I mean, we've got to this. Uh, we've got to the point we wanted to get to, and we've had a look at the the snow effects. And maybe we'll we'll move on to the Mario game in a second. I'll give it one more try. See if I can get the the skip to work. I could also try and complete the level, but um, I'm not going to be very good at that. So this is going to take me right back to the beginning, isn't it? button is it one of these buttons is a, is a level skip and I'm not sure which one it is yes yes that was um, I fell for that hook line and sinker the thing is I even doubted it as I was typing it but it still didn't stop me trying to type it in so <clears throat> uh, okay let's Let's give it one more try. I feel like I'm I'm missing something with oh, there was the pause. Which button is it? That's definitely the pause button, but I, I can't seem to find the level skip. I'm just going to hammer all the buttons. Uh, no, no. Alright. Yeah, back arrow is the level skip, but I don't know what that is in the debugger. Um, and it seems to be very slow as well. I think there's quite a long delay on, on the check for the, the level uh, complete. Um, oh yeah, I'm typing down there now. Escape that, I don't want that. All right, one more, one more try, and then we'll, we'll, if we fail, we'll move straight on to to Mario. So let's get over here, so I've got the most amount of time, uh, and then go through each of the buttons that was doing it before. Uh, none of these seem to be doing it. Uh, we're gonna die. Go back the other side. Yeah. All right. Never mind. We've we've seen what we want to see in this. Um, there's a lot more effects as well. Like the the island hopping has got a really nice effect. I mean, it's just it's just really good use of graphics where the um, where the water line appears in front of the island, um, and that's quite a it's quite an unusual effect to see in games because games tend not to do that on the Commodore 64. But um, Steve obviously found a a, a, a pretty quite simple solution to it really is you just uh, have have another set of animated water tiles which go um, over the the island um, and create a nice continuous kind of wave across it so, uh, all right let's let's reset and let's try and load up Mario let's hopefully I have a bit more luck with this than I've had um, with creatures okay cool so um, I'm not going to explain anything in the in this. I don't think there's much point. Um, but I'm going to just load straight into the game and let's have a look. So, the one thing I do know about this game is they use uh, the same effect that um, was used by the Roland Brothers actually for creatures, which is the VSP scrolling technique. So, <coughs> um, in fact, we can see it um straight away on this level as well so if i go into the uh the vic mode so you'll see as this screen scrolls remember when we did the creatures um and you can see the way it works is it's not actually scrolling the screen it's redrawing the new parts of the screen over this side um and taking it away from this side and it's because it's using this vsp effect to do it um see it a bit easier in the game let me kill the first First thing I'm gonna have to here on it so I can actually see. So you can see as I move along, the Mario sprite stays in the same same place, but that's because it's the Vic trip the Vic chip is being tricked into thinking that the screen has scrolled all the way across. Um, and it's not. So you can see down here it looks like I'm stuck against this pipe, but actually I'm walking um, quite easily across the screen. Um, and this is exactly the same technique that um, the Roland Brothers used for doing creatures and, and mayhem. 
It's a bit more advanced in Mayhem because you can go in both directions, so there's some very clever buffering going on in that. Um, uh, and it's you see the same happens with the score up here. So in order to keep the score in the same place, uh, as I move across, uh, you'll see that the score gets kind of dropped down onto two lines as well. Uh, you see here, it's dropping down onto two lines as I move. Um, and this split here is how, how much of the screen has been scrolled. And what happens is, as soon as this screen has moved all the way across, um, the, this bit here moves all the way across to here, then there's a there's a buffer refresh and this whole screen has to be redrawn again. And that's quite an intense operation, especially when you're doing a full, this is full screen. I mean, every single square of this is being, uh, being scrolled. Um, it's actually 24 lines of map, so I'm guessing it's made out of two by two tiles. Um, oh, I'm looking down here instead of there. So the other neat thing with this as well, and this is something that um, was not done in Creatures or, or Mayhem. Um, if I can get to a place where I can do it, I think I can do it here actually. Um, so in Creatures, when you jump to the top of the screen, um, Actually, this isn't doing what I thought it was doing, which is even more impressive. At least I don't think it is. No, it's not. Okay. So, normally what happens in VSP, when you go over the top, uh, kind of past the, the area where you start the scrolling, which is right here, um, then the as the sprite passes the line, it causes um, a timing issue where you, you can't, you can no longer make it very accurate where you start the VSP and so you get it what happens in creatures is as we saw when we did the uh, hack on that and we made the jump higher um, if we didn't if we didn't block it at the top of the screen uh, and alter that that block um, based on our jump height um, then Clyde would go off the top of the screen and it would break the scroll and then you'd see the screen kind of very quickly flick around around in different places um, but in this it seems like it seems like it's being handled. Um, and I'm not sure how that's being done, so I'm intrigued as to what is being done there to handle that. What I thought was happening was as the sprite reached the top of the screen, it was being um, shrunk, basically. The, the, the data in the sprite was being shifted up to create the illusion of him going off the top of the screen. But you can see here, the sprite is actually going off the top of the screen, and it's not changing. You see in the sprite data here, none of it is actually being changed. Um, although interestingly when it goes off the top of the screen these two sprites switch so it could be something to do with the sprite order as well um, I know different sprites different number sprites over this border cause different timing issues uh, maybe zero page has just spent a lot of time experimenting um, with different timings as the sprite crosses the border um, and has just taken them into account it's it's very impressive actually, it's not what I was expecting at all. Um, unfortunately one thing that is going to be very hard to look at is how the sound was done in this. So anybody who's worked on the NES will know that the uh, the sound chip is quite different to the SID chip. Um, <coughs> it uses mostly pulse waves I believe, um, uh, pulse and noise waves um, and they're just... Whoop, uh, why did I die? Oh, I ran out of time. Yeah, I th I, exactly. I think what what they're doing is, um, as Salmus Digital says, it is possible to get around. It's just incredibly fiddly because the timings are very, very difficult to predict when you go over that uh, that, that state. Um, and I think for a game like Creatures of Mayhem, it didn't really need that. Um, it's a bit worrying actually because I'm so. If, for my Parasol Stars port that I've been working on, I use VSP scrolling. I use this same technique. Um, and I was also blocking uh, the character at the top of the screen uh, because of this timing issue. Um, so how is that one working? Yeah, that's it's still the same. It's still... Oh, it does seem to be doing some kind of cropping as it goes up. It's making sure there's only ever one sprite crossing the boundary and no other sprites drawn above it. Um, so on the on the scrolling levels, I had it blocking at the top of the screen. So I, I'm probably going to have to look into that because I kind of want to do this. I want to do the same here. 
<coughs> I think the that game would definitely benefit from being able to go to the top of the screen. So, um, okay. Are there any other effects in this game that people want to know how it's done? Because I, I can't remember who it was that suggested this game. Uh, but for me, the, the, what I was interested in is how they did the full screen scrolling. And more importantly, how they did the thing off the top. Um, so it'd be... Is Mario also two sprites? He's two sprites when he's in the large mode, yes. Uh, interestingly as well, he, he's he got a bit of kind of data down here. Uh, but it looks like as... As the sprite passes, as the raster passes the bottom of him, the sprite pointer gets changed. Uh, you can see up here the, the sprite pointer data here. Um, so even though it's got this weird kind of uh, extra bit of... Can't say, let me click on there. Even though it's got this weird extra bit underneath him here, um, you never see that because once it gets past a certain point it changes a sprite pointer uh, to a blank sprite. Mario has the advantage that he can't go off the top of the screen at any extras just in the first half of the screen. Yes, that's a good point because in in creatures you go a lot further across the screen, don't you? The the push is, is much further across the screen. Um, whereas in this, um, you, you, as soon as you get to halfway you start pushing the screen. That is less than halfway, it looks like it's about two fifths of the way across the screen. Um, uh, let's have a look at the flower. Let's see how this is. I'm assuming this is just a sprite. So, oh, I run out of time. I mean, okay. Can go the time any Can when the scrolling has stopped though. Okay. I mean, this is uh, this is a very impressive port, and uh, what what I really like about this is that this isn't been done um, entirely from scratch. This has actually been done using the uh, NES source code, so this is actually running the original routines. So uh, most of the bugs, in fact, I think all of the bugs um, that exist in the original uh, exist in this as well. Um, I think the time timer is a bit off. It feels like it's a bit too fast in the 64 version. I don't know why that is. Um, where's that flower? Have I just gone past it? I think I have, haven't I? Yeah, so this is all sprites as well as you would expect. It does handle sprite zero differently, so swap it to avoid any cycle problems. Um, yeah, <laughs> yes, I don't have. Yeah, I, I mean, I was, I was perfectly happy to have the sprite, um, you know, you know, shift up, but appeared to be going off the top. Um, but if you can actually do that, then I may as well just open the borders and and have sprites up there, uh, or at least one sprite up there as well. Uh, I mean, Parasol Stars does have some levels where there are sprites bouncing around up here, so that may have to be limited. Um, I don't think I could have all eight sprites bouncing around up here and then still be able to do the DSP, but... Um... Oh, two sprites, I mean, overlay fresh colours. Uh, yes, they, it is using uh, two sprites. It's using, it's using a multicolour sprite and a high-res overlay. Uh, you can see that here. So it's using a, a brown overlay for the detail, like the mustache uh, and the hairline, and a bit of colour in the in the suit and the feet, and then a, a multicolour character for the, the the stuff underneath. Got scrolling as up in the text. Running to the warp zone in one two might show. So okay, that's assuming I can get there. I've never been very good at Mario. I've never been very good at many games, to be honest. Um, let's see. Try and do it on a slightly bigger screen. I feel like there's a bit of help somewhere. Oh, I thought that. Yeah, 
Everyone can reach world two. All right, okay. Then I will do that. Trying to stop messing around. Let's do this properly. Get the mushroom. So I think that's Sprite, so I want to have a quick look at that. Um, I'd be surprised if it wasn't Sprites. Yeah, it is. Okay. I just, I just needed to see that, just for my own sanity. Okay. There's a bit of a delay as things come into the screen as well, which I think is because it's running on the 64. I think that's not a problem on the C128. Oh, that was the worst jump ever. Yeah, I think Stoker's right. I think to get other sprites to jump out of the screen, that's probably the best way to do it. So you can just keep one. Um, Each world one two. I'm um, I'm there now. So I I can't even remember where the warp zone is on here. I think I have to go up the top somewhere, don't I? So I'm gonna take it a little bit easy, and then if someone can remind me where it is as I get to it, is it here? No, it's not here, is it? Not for the life of me. End of level above the pipe. Okay. Oh man, I feel like I should be able to get that. There is quite a bit of slowdown as well. Um, version of the level if I want to. Yeah, I. I'm not good enough to do that, I don't. I like, like, seriously do not underestimate how bad I am at this game. Or games in general. You wanna see the debugger as I run in the scroll area? You mean the this bit here? Now I don't have the now I don't have my little cheat flower thing, so I've got to actually do some oh god. Okay, let's move that giant ass arrow out of the way. Right, drop onto that. It's also not easy playing on keys as well. So, isn't it here that I have to do? Oh, it's this bit, isn't it? That's right. Oh, that's interesting. So, it appears. Oh no, this is ah, this is the VSP thing. So. What we're seeing here is not the same as what we've seen here. Although the sprite does look like it's in a different place, which is unusual. Um, yeah, strange. Okay. <laughs> if only we knew someone who could hack in infinite lives. Yeah, I really should be doing that, shouldn't I? Ah, okay. But I can still only get. I oh, know. Look, I'm still above the line here. Ah, but at this point, there's no VSP. Notice how the screen hasn't... There's no VSP happening there. 
this bottom line has been removed so this is being hidden um, but it looks like the VSP has stopped at this point can I jump over to that side yeah can I jump up now yeah I think And slow it down a little bit. Yeah, he's jumping up, but there's no VSP effect happening here. I think that's what what's going on. Uh, it, it's basically it scrolled to this point, and then at this point, there's obviously a little bit in the code that says stop doing the VSP. But you can walk over to this side. Um, so as long as the scrolling stops, I think somebody mentioned that. I think they somebody said. I remember it was. I'm trying to find it in the chat, but I don't see it. But um, yeah, I think as long as the as as long as the scrolling has stopped, then you can quite easily get over this side. Um okay, cool. I don't think of any game where you can jump out of the screen. What do you mean jump out of the screen? You mean... I don't know what you mean. Yeah, you mean go off the edges of the screen like that. Um, I think there's a few. Um, I try. I don't think. I don't think you ever do on Turrican. In fact, on Turrican, what happens when you hit the? Uh, if you if you do a jump. Um, and you start falling down the screen faster than it can scroll it will lock you to the edges of the screen um, at a very specific speed you'll you'll actually move quite slowly um, something I wanted to avoid doing in dock 2 as well because I found um, the jumps didn't feel natural at that speed so um, I, I kind of tried to make sure that the scroller was fast enough that you could fall and still have the screen keep up with you as well. Okay. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to see in this this game before I commit it to the bin? Should I try and put infinite lives in? Yeah. Yeah, Turrican does. And the other thing with Turrican as well is it it doesn't have inertia on the scroll. Um, um, at least I don't think. No, it doesn't. You you just have kind of an area that you can that you can move around. The sprite can move faster than the scroll, and the scroll will catch up with it. But there's no inertia to the scroll, so the the, the scrolling algorithm is a little bit simpler to do. Um, but it is locked to two um, pixels per frame. You never scroll faster than that. Um, I've got a demo lined up next, so I'm gonna we'll have a quick look at this demo. It's a single. Uh, a single file demo so it shouldn't be too much and I'm pretty sure this is going to be mostly unrolled code um, let me need to unmount that cartridge somehow how do I unmount a cartridge uh, it's a cartridge no that's everything there Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at this, and then we'll have a look at water affecting org. Oh, I think I saw you playing that one. That looked painful to play. I mean, the effect looked really nice, but um, looked looked like a painful game to play. Seem to have done. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, right. So let's let's just have a look at it. Oh, I've just restarted it. First of all, I want to see it in in here because I've not seen it properly. So. Let's have a look at it in, in Vice first. Um, let's stick some desktop audio on as well. Let's turn that audio off. Okay, so I can see straight away why you guys wanted me to look at this. Because that's... I have no idea how they're doing that. 
I'm assuming this is VSP actually. I'm assuming this is doing that same same effect. But how they're doing that wobble, I have no idea. multiple character sets. Uh, but I really don't know. It's interesting that they're just squares as well, so there's obviously something going on with those. Um, could be that it's sprites maybe? I'm not sure. Know how they do the pack, right? I'm pretty sure that's just going to be sprites or, or a character animation. Notice they've got the borders open as well, so you can see they've got the border open up here and, and down here as well. I think if I drink enough tequila and, and watch this demo, it will just look like normal text, right? very interested how they've done this because it doesn't make any technical sense to me. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Alright. Right, let's, let's turn that off. Let's have a look at it in the debugger. Let's sit back on. I don't know if you can even hear that music in the background. Seems quite low tonight. So. It's always amazed me just how much the demo scene managed to squeeze out of this humble little machine. Uh, and when you see some of the effects that they do, and they're almost they're almost better than things you see on you know Amigas and stuff. It's incredible. Okay, so let's load it in and immediately pause it as I want to know exactly what's going on. Okay. That's a bitmap. There we go. So this is this is a bitmap. Well, that's interesting. So this whole thing is a bitmap. This is just sprites. So to answer your question, steps. This is a sprite um, animation. I don't know how they're doing this. Just trying to think what it could possibly be. So does does this change or is it always following the same ah that's interesting. So notice how on here Oh no no it's not. Yeah the, what we're seeing down at the bottom is different to what we're seeing at the top. And it's you it is using BSP so it's using BSP to shift it across. You see how the screen is shifted. So this is using the same effect we see in creatures to shift things across. And then I think, I think all it's doing is it's the same pattern. You notice this curve is the same all all across the screen. Oops. Wow, look at the code. So if you can see the code at the side, so as I as I hover over various areas of the screen, what the debugger does is tell you what code's being run at this very point. Um, when the raster was last at that point, what the code was running. And if you look kind of down here, I just drop that there. Look at this. This is just masses of unrolled code. Um, it's literally copying so it's taking two values, two consecutive values from memory and switching them over. Or it's switching, it's, it's cycling things through memory. 
And that memory is... That's not even in screen space. This is a hard one to explain. Uh, the whole thing is just speed code. Um, I'm pretty sure if we look at the memory map for this, it's going to look very kind of yeah, very methodical and um, where is that? That's nine thousand. So let's just go to like nine thousand, see what's there. Okay, so this is code. There's a few legal instructions in there, so they're saving some time by doing some illegal instruction stuff. Um, and then just lots and lots of unrolled loops. Um, this this stuff here, I mean, it looks like it's a lookup table, but it's not. It's just code. It's just so repetitive because it's using the the kind of unrolled loops. It almost looks like it's actually um, table data, but it's not. Uh, this bit here, this looks like graphics data. So I think this is the bitmap. In fact, it is the bitmap because that's at 2000, the bitmap is. So the bitmap will be from 2000 to 4000. So that's where the bitmap is. Then they're using the VSP trick to move it around. Make it appear like it's wobbling. So they draw the screen along a certain curve. And then I guess all they need to do is change the colours in that row. Then VSP... So they must be shifting the colours as well. Every time they shift the screen using VSP, they shift the colours back, I think. Um, maybe? I don't know. It's a really tricky one. It's a very, very good, um, good explanation. Let's see what everyone else is saying. So, um, Entire screen blitting. Yeah, I mean, it seems that way, but I think they're using some clever tricks to make it seem like it. So the first thing you notice is that this is actually just lots of colours. Um, there's not a lot of detail in here. Um, the detail comes from just having kind of larger blocks. So I think most of the work is done um, not from kind of blitting pixels, but by blitting colors around. Um, what's going on in zero page? Let's go and have a look at zero page. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff here. So the thing with speed code is you are going to get lots of use of, of the zero page stuff. And you can see things animating across this all the time but this might be something to do with it as well what it's doing I don't know you can see here as well um, things going on there's this effect that we've seen here as well this these blue lines this is code being executed in these locations so there must be a different speed code for each kind of line along the curvature um, but the texture map a small bitmap and walk along it I think yeah I think that's what they're doing I think they've got They've got a very small version of this, um, where each each large pixel here is just one bit, um, or maybe a couple of bit planes for the different colours. Um, and then I think they're just going column by column through it um, as the screen is scrolled across, and and maybe changing the colours. Something I, I I'm honestly not entirely sure what they're doing. Um, could you somehow disable the VSP scroll and watch it play? Well, disabling the VSP is basically what this is doing here. So you can see here, it's kind of following. If I put my point here, you see how that the, the edges of the text are pretty much always going through this. The, the, the change is only happening because the screen is scrolling. So that's where the, where the wobble's coming from, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, it takes some really, really good planning to, to work out how to do this. Uh, well, it'd be interesting to find out. Oh, look at this. This speed code's interesting. So we were looking at zero page. Look at this. This is just rotating things through zero page. Go right to the beginning. So it's loading the contents of 10 and 11. And then it's storing the contents of 10. as contents of 11 in 10. And the contents of 10 in 12. I think this is what's... I don't know. Maybe it's causing the wobble. I'm, I'm honestly really confused by this. It's, it's very impressive. 
for the cell is scroll left each frame and the code for each star can be cleaned. So yeah, I, I had a feeling the colours were being shifted. Um code for each cell can be declared the row. Yeah. I'd love to see the original source for this. So the, the, the only problem with Unroll Code is it's quite difficult to actually make head or tail of it. And, and the fact that they're using the entire, look at this, the entire zero page is just being used for shifting these values along um, from one, well, not the entire one, from one zero all the way up to FF, which we saw when, when you go in here as, um, back to the zero page. Oops. You can see these values being shifted along. Um, I mean, this could be the rows, the, the screen columns being shifted along. It is probably C++ original source. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Speed code is generated to match the bitmaps to the escape. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that would make Oh, I see. So, so every, every kind of different shape as it goes along has a piece of generated um, bitmap, a uh, generated speed code for it. And then they're just using this entire area here um, to jump to the correct one. So different letters will cause different patterns in here as it goes along. Yeah. It's, it's very, very impressive. Basically. Yeah, it's the sort of thing I, I, I just don't really know where to begin with. Yeah, the big scroll text in Iridium, I do like that as well. Right, I'm going to leave that on for a minute. I'm going to see if I can find, uh, what was it again? What was the, it was all was not it? Was, okay. Let's have a look at that. If anybody's got a suggestion to, to look at after UG, then uh, please drop it in the chat and we'll we'll take a look after we've looked at this water effect UG. Assuming I can get this to load. Um, I do really like looking at demos. I, I think they're the mo most interesting of all the um, coding effects. And, and it's certainly, I've, I've learned a lot of stuff looking at other um, other. Bob coded this in assembler, scripting might have been in Python though. Okay, yeah. The list boost design. Oh my multi the multiplexer I did is really, really simple. Um I'll 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 Alright, I'll tell you what, I'll quickly I'll quickly show you what that's doing. Um it's really, really simple. Uh, I think this is it actually, I think I can just run that, or have I, I might have reverted the code, so let's have a look. Yeah, I reverted it on that one, hang on, let me... It's a very, very naive um, sprite multiplayer, I didn't have a lot of time, so I just threw stuff together. Um, and it's essentially what it's doing, um, open the folder. Essentially what it's doing is it's creating, I think it's 24 sprites, um, where is it, that one. That one I hope. Yeah. Oh, why is it not working? Oh, binary. oh I need the, I need the app stuff. Oh. Copy the map. It's creating uh, 24 sprites. Um, and then um, apply, moving them, shifting them around in a table, which is using a cosine and sine uh, to create a kind of fancy pattern. Um, and then all the multiplexer is doing. So normally with a multiplexer, what you do is you would sort the sprites in Y order, which I am doing. Um, and then you would also um, work out how many rasters you need to do. You would either do one per sprite, uh, which is a kind of a, a naive but slightly better way of doing it than I'm doing it, um, but you need quite tight timings for that. Or you would work out 
how many sprites you needed to draw um, before you had to stop and then wait for the next sprite. So you'd have to like, make sure that if you draw sprite zero, that you don't try and draw the next sprite zero before the, that one has finished drawing and things like that. Um, but rather than do that, all I did was um, I took the easy route out um, and I split the, the list of sprites up into groups of four um, and just drew four sprites at a time. So draw four, four sprites, uh, then wait for the next, um, wait for the, the top of the next sprite and then draw that one as well. Uh, for some reason this isn't working, so... Good job I videoed it, really. Another try. Where's my folder gone? I think I need to put this in a source folder. I think that's fine. Right. <sighs> Can I open file? Assets. What's my structure in? I need my structure in my other other folder. It's because I copied it out of the main uh, "Let's Make a Game" folder and uh, put it somewhere else. So source. Oh, okay. It needs to be in one more folder. I'm it. So yeah, it is, it is a very naive um, implementation of multiplex, but it's enough to kind of create a fairly decent uh, representation of a multiplexer. And all this pattern is here is because I'm using uh, two tables. Common. Uh, this is a very common demo effect. You will see. Um, I mean, it looks kind of more complicated than it really is. If I if I just strip both of these out. Um, to back to the basics basically the way these work is you uh, you create a table of sign values that go through the degrees from 0 to 360 and you do the same with cosine values and then when you run uh, just with those values you get a circle so that's the most basic kind of pattern you can do like that and then the trick is to adjust either the x or the y so if we we half the, the speed of the um, sorry, double the speed of the X. What will happen is for every rotation of a ball going round, it will go once from from the bottom to the top, but from left to right twice. So we'll get a figure of eight if I do this now. Um, so no, we don't get a figure of eight. It needs to be one more. This is about playing with these values and finding ways to multiply them and stuff. Um, it's not, but I can make it available to play with. It's fine. It's just it was in the um, it's in the stream. Yeah, see that you got something different there again. So what I like to do is with these is is uh, just add uh, like this. You take the same same formula, the cosine. This bit on the end is just making sure that the value. Um, bits in the screen is centered at the point that I want it to be centered on so th this bit isn't that important um, I'm also only using uh, the, the lower eight bits of X I'm not using bit nine um, yeah the, the <laughs> kick assembler is brilliant for this um, yeah so this technique basically if I leave if I leave the top one alone and I just multiply the bottom one by a sign value as well um, I create an, a, a different kind of effect because now I'm doing now I'm kind of mixing two um, sine and cosine waves together. You create effects like this. Um, if I make that two five six. It should hopefully be different again. Go figure of eight. Um, 
But the multiplexer isn't bad. I mean, considering it's a naive implementation, I can get... Uh, so that's 24. I think I can get 20. But I think it will start flickering. So if I just do it as a circle, I think you'll see a bit more flickering than, than normal. But yeah, there you go. I mean, that's not, not too bad. That's 32 sprites. There is some flickering because it is starting to get to the point where actually it, it's not got enough time to draw things. <coughs> um... Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's that. I'm going to keep adding things to that as well. Um, I will make this, this code available uh, tomorrow at some point. I'll, I'll just drop it back into the um, Let's Make a Game stream uh, code. So there is, uh, where is it? The In this Let's Make a Game folder, there is a, a folder called Stream Episode 1. I'll just drop it in there. Uh, but I can do that now and commit it so you guys can play with it. So let me just... Um, revert my sprites back to how they were. It's like that, wasn't it? Let's just give that a quick try. It's not neat code by any means. It's, it's literally took me two hours to do. Um, and it could be way better than it than it really is. So don't, don't expect anything particularly understandable or neat. Um, but it is it is there, so let me drop that in. That should be enough. Um, it's got the, all the sprite data in there as well, so you shouldn't need anything else. Okay, let's let's take a look at UG Olympics then. But I'm gonna go for a quick smoke. Um, five minutes, then we we'll come back. We'll have a look at UG Olympics. Right, multiplexing is a is a quite a complex topic there's there's some easy ways to do it um there's ways to do it like naively like that i mean if i reduce that sprite limit down to uh 16 or 12 then that that would work perfectly well for most games um then there's more complex ones where the sort algorithm is is more complicated um not UG olympics I'm going to look at the water. Oh, not UG Olympics. Oh, no, no, sorry, it wasn't UG Olympics. It was UG that I downloaded. Uh, I think it's this one. Yeah, and then there's multiplexers where there's um, there's clever tricks as well. So, for instance, if you try and draw uh, nine sprites on a line instead of eight, what some multiplexers will do is they will take the 8th sprite and they will toggle it with the ninth sprite. Um, so instead of one sprite disappearing permanently, you just get a nice smooth um, kind of... It's still it's still a flicker, but it's a smooth flicker between the two, two sprites. Um, that's what a really good sprite multiplexer will do. Uh, and then there's very specific multiplexers. So like we saw in Creatures 2 when the texture is going up the screen. Um, it's a very quick thing because they only have to move the sprites down one row at a time um, on the y-axis. They don't have to change the sprite pointers, they don't have to change the x-position, um, they don't have to change the colours. Um, they didn't even have, they weren't even using the, the most significant byte, they weren't even using the ninth bit of the x-position. Um, okay. I'm going to go for a quick smoke. I'm going to leave you with the uh, video of the multiplexer again for five minutes. And then when we come back, we'll have a look at this bug. I think this is probably the right one. Um, but we'll find out when I come back. Oh, it's running the emulator as well. I should probably run it. All right, so be right back, guys. Five minutes. I'm back. Yeah, it was smoke time. Uh, uh, it's a new... Oh, welcome to the stream FX node. Um, it's a relatively new hobby. I mean, I've been doing this to this extent for about two and a half years now. I used to code a long time ago in my teens, um, but never did anything significant. I never released anything. And when I came back to the scene, there's just a wealth of information online, so I was able to kind of look look through it all and, and kind of just dissect games basically and look at how they worked and, and figure out effects for myself. 
um, with a lot of help from the forums though as well, so not entirely by myself. Okay, let's try this UG, if it works. Seems to be doing something, memory's going crazy, so it's depacking somewhere, there we go. I believe this is the right one, we'll soon find out. Space bar. Yeah, mostly dissecting Turrican 2. Turrican 2, and creatures actually. A lot of creatures and a lot of mayhem as well. Um, space, there we go. But I didn't have this debugger then either, I was just using Vice. So I was just go going into Vice, uh, pausing the game, bringing up the monitor, looking through the code, trying to work out how things were uh, were being done. A slow process but I got there in the end. Thank you for the follow Porker911. Welcome to the stream. Unity, Unreal and Godot is more my bag. Yeah I was looking at um I was looking at uh, Godot quite a bit actually recently. Uh for well I'd say recently it was probably about a year ago uh, for another personal project I was looking at doing. Um but then I kind of really got quite heavily into the Commodore scene and I've not looked back since. I am going to give myself everything unlimited. So I think this is the right game, we shall soon find out. Let's start the game. That looks like it because I remember these passwords. There's a weird glitch going on here, I don't know what that's about. I have to press anything to get Okay, so um, I think it's a bit glitched actually. Or is it just. What? Okay, I have no idea what just happened. So if anyone wants to tell me what the hell's going on, that would be great. Oh, I fly this thing around. Here. Okay, let's just pause the game. Let's have a look at the, the screen down here. Um, so. There's definitely an effect going on here. Um, I don't think it shows us any of the scroll values, but we can see it in these up here. So there's the X and Y scroll here. So there's a color split, first of all. There's two actually. So there's a white one for the, t the surface of the water. You see it very briefly flicker to white. There's like one or two lines and then it goes blue. So that's how we get in the, uh, the, the color change here. Um, Well, what is it? I, I, it looks like a cage of some kind. It looks very strange. Um, and then they've obviously changed the graphics a little bit, so it kind of extends out a bit. I, I don't think that's. I think that's just part of the design. I don't think it's meant to look like a a weird reflection. Right? But uh, if I move down this list, what you, um, I think you're going to see is this X scroll value here is going to kind of change as I move down, um, which it is. Do you see two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, and that's going to create a kind of slight ripple effect as it goes down. Um, quite an easy, easy effect to do as well. It's um, and if you've got a static screen, why not? You may as well, you may as well use it. It's a simple effect to pull off. And just using this space down here to do it and then there's another split here to show the hood uh, at which point the colors change again you see the colors are different as I as I go over so for the bottom what looks like three lines or so uh, well 24 lines three three rows of characters they're, they're just changing that, that X value you can see as I move up and down it changes between zero and three which is just going to cause a slight scroll as it as it goes so let's get back to the main screen um yeah not the smoothest effect either um i don't know why actually it's not too bad it's not too bad I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what i'm supposed to do am i supposed to pick these guys up or something Oh, I killed that guy, I think. Oh. I 
have no idea what I'm doing here. And then what, am I supposed to land here or something? No? Do the shall and ripple. <laughs> so they scroll line by line in the chars. Um, well, yeah, they're not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're not. Um, they're not moving the chars. They're just doing a, a, a screen horizontal scroll by three pixels. Um, oh, I'm not supposed to kill them, am I? Then I don't know what the hell I'm doing there. This thing. Take them to where they want to go. Where do they want to go? Do I have to go off the net, off the screen? Do I go? No. I feel like it should be game over. They give you a number when you collect them. Where's the number? Oops. But I haven't collected it. Am I, is it game over? I'm going to crash. Again. So I go and land next to one of the dudes. So I wait for a dude to come out. There's a dude. So I'm going to go and land here. And he says number one. Uh, I see. Right. Makes sense now. Uh, okay. Can I pick that up? No. Yep. Okay. I guess that's my fare. Ah, okay. It's an interesting game. Oops, I'm not one in the water. That is, he dead now. Oh, I can save him. Okay, well, I didn't. <laughs> ah, okay. Is there anything weird going on on this screen? I don't think there is, to be honest. Um, no, just a colour shift as it goes down. So it's using multi-colour uh, changes to change the colours of things as it goes down. Uh, you can see there's a split here through the characters, so um, and there's another one down there. You can see the split happening there and there. Yeah, it's... it's, it's easy. I'm, I'm not sure I like it though, to be honest. It's not my sort of game. That's, that's just me. Um, yeah, so if anybody's got a suggestion, uh, give me uh, give me a link. Uh, well, you can give me a CSDB link or you can just tell me uh, something to have a look at and we'll, we'll go and have a look at that. Um, yeah, the water effect is all right. I, I think it could have been smoother. Um, I, that's just me though. I'm kind of I'm a little bit pedantic when it comes to these things. Dantic, is that the right word? I, I'm not happy unless it's perfectly smooth and I would have liked that to have been a bit smoother. Oh. Mythos demo. Mythos demo. Oh, yes. Okay, let's, let's have a look. Uh, Mythos C64 demo. That's a cracker group. Let's have a look on here. I'm not sure that's the right one. I've downloaded it, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure that's the right one. Drop it in while I have a look at other things. Okay, that's another good one. Yeah, I've seen this demo. This is this is pretty good. I'm gonna grab that one as well. We'll do that one in a second. Just want to see if I can get this Mythos one working. I don't think I've got the right file here, to be honest. 
Um, I have a feeling this might be crunch space to start. I need to turn off my joystick. Ah, there we go. That's probably more like it. Secret.prg. Hardly, hardly secret, but okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree. I, I do prefer to look at things um, that are used in games, but I have noticed there's a. Oh, that's really cool. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that well, but the, it looks like there is a map actually in the memory. Um, so th this memory is exactly one page wide. So this is 256 bytes across and 256 bytes down. So I think what they're doing here, before I even start and see what's actually going on in the game, they're using what's called the moving window technique, where um, you draw you draw to screen directly without using tiles directly from memory. So you just you, you move a window across this, um, drawing what you what's here. Um, so let's have a look what it looks like in the game. I'm imagining this is some kind of map of the game. It's a very fast way of uh, of doing. Maps. It does mean your maps are quite small, um, but it does mean you can put a lot of detail into them because you're no longer using tiles, so you're not limited to uh, repetitive patterns. You can put any kind of combination of characters. It could even be done with bitmaps. I mean, this could be a bitmap as well. I don't think it is, though, looking at it. It looks... I don't know. Maybe it could be. We'll see. Uh, let's turn on the thing. I think this is probably going to be. I think this is a bitmap actually. Um, it's not loading for some reason. Is it Joyport 1? Maybe I need to swap my joystick. Uh... Ah, yes, it is. So it's using a bitmap. So this whole thing is done with a bitmap. Um, and it's using the uh, the moving window. Also, this looks like it could be using AGSP to do this. But AGSP is a variation of the VSP trick. So VSP trick, what creatures mayhem, um, as we saw, uh, Mario uses it as well. That the the sensor demo uses it to move the screen uh, by an entire screen, left or right. AGSP allows you to do the same thing but also using line crunch and FLD to move the screen up and down as well. It looks like this might be doing it because one of the side effects of using that method is you can't use the top, you can't scroll the top row. You have to use sprites in the top row. Um, although this looks like a lot of, lot of data for just sprites. So maybe it's not, um, that could be one sprite, two sprites, could be split as well. So, I don't know, it could be. I, th I reckon that sprites up at the top. Um, but look, yeah, it is as well. There you go. So it's using sprites up at the top. And then I reckon as I move around, oh, in fact, I can see it there. You can see the split down here and a split here. So with VSP, you just get a split this way. But with FLD, you get a split down here as well. Um, so as I move around this map, let me put the cursor here. As I move around this map, you'll see the splits move around in different ways. That means they can scroll this full color bitmap uh, very quickly around in memory. Um, <clears throat> so here you want a real fix of game change, make Driller playable. That seems to be a common request actually, is uh, not specifically Driller, but to make games playable. It's like people are upset that the, these games aren't as good as they, they thought they were going to be. So yeah, this is this looks really really nice actually. It's done very very well. And so what they're doing 
um, they're using this AGSP technique to scroll around this map here. Um, as I move, you should see like highlights in blue as I move around this. So that's where I am now. That's the house there. And you see as I move around, you can see where the, the new data is being pulled in for the scroll. And you can see it's only having to draw these two edges here. And it looks like the character is actually drawn uh, in bitmap as well. Uh, maybe with a sprite overlay. So let's take a quick look at that. Um, yeah, so it looks like it's using... Oh, it's not drawn in bitmap. Okay, it's just drawn uh, with two sprites. Uh, a black sprite, high-res sprite overlay um, over a low-res sprite. It looks like the shadow might be done um, with bitmap, which is why when we move around we can see um, seeing this bit here. Oops. You can see a little dot where the player is. I think that's just the shadow being drawn on the ground. Um, black is obviously uh, the background colour. Um, and that lets them do everything else. Why wasn't this game finished? This looks absolutely incredible. <laughs> I made the last V8 even less playable. I only had three hours to do that. I, I think, for me, it seemed a bit more playable. So... Um, from the and yeah either way it's a big achievement so this is very impressive the, the, the only downside to doing this is you can see how big how limited you are with the map size I mean it's still quite a big map but you would have to use cartridge or something to load these maps in quickly that's taken up from what, three three thousand ish um, all the way up to 9,000 so you're looking you're looking at about three or four banks on a cartridge for this uh, probably three um, maybe two with compression because it is there's a lot of kind of repetitive empty space so it could be compressed as well um, but you've got to be careful with compression because obviously decompressing this much is going to take a little bit of time um, and you don't want too much of a delay you're running from character. A little bit of delay is fine, but you don't want you no know, 10 second delay between maps. Um, game was ditched after crossbow lost interest in the dark and time was against him. It's a real shame because it's a beautiful looking game. Um, so is it just using high res? No, uh, high res, sorry. Is it using. Yeah, there's no high res bits in it. Well, there wouldn't be actually because it's using a bitmap, so. It has to be multicolor bitmap, which we see in there, uh, and no matter where I go on the screen, it always is. Uh, but the use of AGSP is really nice as well because the, the the actual display itself, just looking at that, I mean, like you can, if you think about it, you can see how it's made with sprites. It's two rows of sprites, um, four sprites in the middle, uh, one sprite or two sprites at the edge, and two two more sprites over here. For the top bit and it looks like one sprite here and three sprites over here one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah so you've got you've got three sprites on this side one here four in the middle and then two here four here two here um and this is this is the agsp technique do you have a request the easy flash version of neuromancer is nice but it crashes when you try and fight a certain boss and the saves aren't portable to the 64 version if i sent you a save right before the boss in which it crashes be able to figure out what's gone wrong um i probably could but i don't think i could do it in um in in like half an hour which is about what i've got um but feel free to send it me on on discord we can maybe maybe do that in a in another stream at some point i can have a little look ahead of time to see if it's something i think is fixable have a look at it hey rule the thirds welcome to the stream Yeah, this is, it's a very interesting technique, this, and I like the fact that they're using AGSP to scroll a bitmap, um, which is kind of unique. And this is this is the sort of thing you would have seen in demos before. So, you know, as you say, Hayes, it's it's interesting to to find out how to do effects in games, um, and this this technique would have been something that came from the demo scene, scrolling a huge bitmap around like this. Um, you've probably seen it actually in in a few demos. If you imagine, if you imagine splitting this up into uh, say eight sections this way, maybe 
two or three this way um, and then drawing the same map at different zoom levels in bitmaps you could then move your window around this and then quickly flick between them and now now you've got a bitmap that's not only scrolling around but he's zooming in and out as well and I think that's an effect that um, is, is used in quite a few demos now and they will be using AGSP to do that as well and I actually go in there uh, okay, so this is literally just a tech demo at the moment. Um, there's some stuff going on down here. I'm not sure what that is. Um, this looks like code that's running up here. Uh, let's jump to that area. So we're going to have a look at that. Um, yeah, so this is this is some code. Looks like sprite code. Got references to E018. Um, is actually that's uh, character. Okay, interesting. Um, but this is code that's running here around this location anyway and it only only activates when I'm actually walking around uh, why can't I walk anymore I seem to have managed to stop somehow I stuck a breakpoint in somewhere yeah I have done it And there's this block of code here. Purple means it's being written to and read from at the same time, I believe. Um, let's have a look what this is. Uh, this seems to be a mishmash. So this looks like some other kind of data. I'm not sure what this is. I don't know if there's any sound in this game. Let's... Uh, uh, that's my sound. Oh, there's no sound, so I don't have any of that. Yeah, there's a sword swipe as well. I need to move faster at some point, then. I don't know why. Yeah, so there's, there's a little bit of room here. It looks like there's a couple of K there that could have been... Yeah, 4k or so here. Uh, a little bit round here that seems to be blank as well. Um, it could have been if there's certain inaccessible areas of the map, you could you can inject code into there as well. So what you might want to do with something like this is make some inaccessible areas if you've got no room for code, but you need some specific code for the level. Um, you could put um, you could hide code in the in the level bitmap itself. Um, but I, th I, th I th honestly think this could be done. This could, this could be kind of continued and made to work. This, this is a very, very nice approach to doing this. I kind of want to get down here. I want to see what this arrow is. I'm going to get down to this arrow. Um, if I can get there. I can walk across water. That's kind of cool. Um. The, the only problem with this is the backgrounds would have to be very static. You'd either have to have multiple versions of the map, in which case you're going to reduce the size of the map considerably uh, to animate things like water. Um, or you'd have to have some very smart routines to kind of work out where the water was and, and change it on the fly, uh, which would be quite slow. But the thing we're using this AGSP technique is it is very cheap to do. This, this screen scrolling around is costing almost nothing to do. Um, and there'll be a there'll be a back buffer, so as you move around, it will work out where to draw, um, where the next screen needs to draw, and then it will switch screen and bitmap at some point, or it should do. So it's not doing. That's interesting. So maybe it is just. It doesn't seem to be changing any of it. Meaning, back bitmap are really remain in the same place so there must be a point when it hits the edge where there's a bit of a jitter as it redraws things I'm not seeing any that's kind of fine change sprite to a v8 car <laughs> make turns impossible and hedges destroy your car uh, instantly Okay, that's cool. I, I'm glad I've looked at this. This is a really, really interesting game. Um, 
I'm not seeing this arrow though. Where is this arrow? It's supposed oh, it's these bushes. Okay. They're pointing over here. I can't go in there. Okay, so there, there's nothing to actually do in there, but yeah, this <laughs> this does look a hell of a lot like uh, Zelda, doesn't it? Could you scroll like this any faster for a slip start? Yes, you could. Um, I mean, this is moving relatively slowly, so if you were to uh, double buffer this, um, you could. You could very easily uh, make this work um, at much higher speeds as well. Um, the 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 only limitation with with this is that when you when you reach the edge of of this area, you have to redraw everything. I'm not entirely sure how he's doing it. It could be that it's completely unrolled code somewhere. Um, let's reach the edge and and have a look at the so the crescent up between the I don't see anything that looks like unrolled code showing up. Um, see this here? No, that's not it. Um, but yeah, other, other than that, you can scroll incredibly far. I mean, look at Mayhem. Mayhem uses a horizontal only version of this technique, um, and and that. You know, that that is very fast. So if you imagine kind of mayhem speeds, but in all four directions, um, that's the sort of thing you sh you would technically be able to achieve. Um, although to be honest, if I was doing a racing game, I would I, like slicks. I wouldn't go down the bitmap route, even though it would look amazing. I wouldn't go down the bitmap route. I would go down. Um, I would still go down the tile set route. I'd use relative. I'd use quite small tiles, maybe two by two, um, with a very large tile set, so you could create lots of stuff. And then that way, you wouldn't have to scroll bitmap data. Um, so when you do the redraw, you're not having to redraw an entire bitmap. But this is like seven k of data, and that's a lot to redraw. Um, it would be a lot easier to do this with tiles instead, and then you've only got uh, you know less than one k of data to. Um, all right, I'm going to take a look at uh, the demo again, uncensored. We'll have a quick look at that demo. Um, uh, is there any other games suggested? On Talking about this game, okay, cool, yeah. So we'll we'll have a look at this demo. Um, I'm gonna put it into Vice first so we can see it. Um, no, that's just a hard reset. That is it. Some desktop audio on. I believe I've seen this before. I remember it being pretty good from what I remember. Uh, oh, there we go. It tricked me. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. I think you should be able to. Yeah, I made sure I saved it to a few places. I actually forgot where I'd saved it. I was just trying to find it. That's the one thing I did look for before the stream because I knew it would be difficult to find. Nice, nice kind of interference effects going on there. Do some pauses on that bit to see see what they're doing. Be interesting. 
nice effects. So we have to really do that as well. So this weekend, um, the Saturday stream, I am out on Saturday daytime um, on my daughter's birthday. Um, going for a meal and a few drinks so I'm hoping I'll be back for half nine if I'm not I still will stream um, but I may be a little bit later than usual uh, but I'll try I'll try and get back for half nine I know she's got to drive back to Oxford so she's not going to be out for staying out too long and after the stream on Saturday I will either stream PC Engine if I have it which I don't think I will unless it arrives tomorrow um, or I will stream GPD because uh, I've got the cable for that I've not tested it yet but I'll test it on Saturday we'll do some uh, PC Engine version of uh, Parasol Stars if we can't map a little bit more of it so that um, th that picture scrolling up could possibly be um, using the same line crunch uh, technique Do we have any map stuff that we need to work on before Saturday stream? Um, none that I can think of offhand. I think sprites. We need player sprites. That's what we need now. Um, we need to make a new sprite. Um, I don't know what to suggest. I think we, we need like three or four sizes. Um, so we could do with kind of coming up with a design for maybe one of the sizes and then trying to shrink it when we're happy with it and uh, make it bigger as well. So I, I thought I knew how that effect worked until it started rotating. Now it's rotating, I'm not sure. <laughs> you don't know where I'm going though, Andy. You don't know where I'm going, so that's fine. That's a nice effect as well. I'm not sure how that's done. Could be sprite. I felt it probably is sprites for it to be able to do that, I guess. Not entirely sure how, but got to be sprites. this BSP lab oh for testing the VSP effect yeah I'm I'd love to do that steps it's just a very hard game I've only ever been to uh, world 4 and that takes a lot of effort. Although I did play it last night on my GPD and got to world 3.6 on my on my first go, which I was quite impressed with. Ah, maybe that maybe that lab software will help me work out how to do the, um, the sprites across the border. It might be what they he used to do that. Yeah, these are nice effects. I think this is done using multiple character sets. I think that's what's going on there. Uh, but we'll we'll take a look. effect as well. I'm not 
The thing with this is I, I spend so long trying to figure them out and then I put them in the dissembler and it's never what I think it is. And yeah, I do really want to get into security. I've been doing more SQL injection training today, which was kind of nice. Learned some new techniques I didn't know before. Alright, let's let's load this into the debugger. We can go through I mean there's more to it, but let's go through what we've seen so far. I don't have too much longer. Um let's load the debugger up. I have three copies of it open, don't need that. And let's load the disk. Let's see, hopefully this just works. <clears throat> Oops. So I've paused it there. I'm going to turn the sound off because that's very frustrating. Uh, uh, so this is a kind of interference effect. Um, I actually do this in dock um, for the rewind doesn't actually show much at that point but it's just doing a split between two if I advance a little bit yeah they're just very quickly flickering between different screen modes some with interference um, like for instance that is just some random point in memory um, I've actually picked uh, they're drawing a bitmap at zero which is why you can see the the, the char ROM here um, so the second half of the screen is from 1000 to 2000 um, which is the uppercase and lowercase uh, default fonts in Commodore 64, which is what you can see there. I'm sure if I turned off multicolor mode, um, which I don't think I can do directly from here, you would see these are just exactly the Petsky fonts. Uh, and this is the, the lower half of memory. So, but just by f flicking the bitmaps around really quickly, um, it creates that interference effect. And here they're doing a similar thing again. They're, they, they're creating eight sprites, double size sprites, all the way across the screen. Um, so a sprite is 24 pixels wide. If you double it in the X, you get 48. Times that by eight, you get 384, uh, which covers the entire width of the, the screen. So you can see there all the way across the screen. Actually, it looks like they've opened the side borders as well. So you can see, you can see the sprites in the side borders. So these borders are open here. So they're also every frame, they're uh, every every line. I think it's every line, or is it every bad line? I can't remember. It's I think it's every line actually. So I have to remember to draw the border at the edges. Um, so every line there, they're kind of flickering between 38, 40 column mode, um, make the the sprites basically fill the entire screen, um, and then they're using a sprite multiplexer to switch between different sprite pointers um, so you can see here it goes to different sprite point 3 fc0 which is a fully opaque sprite and then part way down it picks some random locations which create this kind of weird pattern you can see there you've got a petsky character sitting in there it looks like um, again they're, they're just picking random locations down the screen so it's creating these weird bands of interference um, Oh yeah, I didn't know you could do that. There you go, you learn some every day. Thank you, Furrow. That's very useful. Obviously, I've gone past that screen now, so... Yeah, that's a cool effect. Um, it's, it is really similar, actually, to what I'm doing with, um, with, with the Dock Rewind. So I've got this kind of bar of interference at the bottom of the screen. I'm not using sprites. What I'm doing is I'm just switching the character set. Um, it does have one limitation when I set the character set like that in that I have to draw at least eight lines using the memory location because once the Vic has fit, fetched that row of characters it can't fetch again until it gets to the next row of characters um, so but, but the, by them doing it with sprites there are, they can actually reduce it to even less than that they can, you can see here there's a very thin line um, of like you know, maybe one or two pixels high before they switch back to a different character set that's actually a nicer way of doing it, but unfortunately I can't do it with sprites because I need the sprites to do other things. 
um, similar effect. That's kind of cool that they've done that. Okay, let's advance it on a little bit. So this looks like probably probably a bitmap, um, judging by this kind of empty space here. I'd imagine it probably is. Um, it might not be though. It might be a normal screen with a sprite moving across it. So let's have a look at that. Um, it is just a normal text screen. So these are just these are just actually it's all the same character, just different colors. And then they're using a multiplexed sprite to. Again, this is a naive. Uh, kind of sprite multiplexer because they know it's all going to move together they don't need to sort they can just always draw these four then these four then these four then these four at these very specific locations um, you'll see this a lot in boss fights in games um, so in order to create the big boss for instance in creatures 2 they'll draw <coughs> seven or eight sprites across the top I can't remember if it's seven or eight I think it is eight actually I think Andy said it was um, using characters for the um, for the blobs that come across from the sides, um, and so what John did was draw you know, seven or eight—I can't remember the exact number—sprites uh, in a row, and then as soon as you as soon as you start drawing them sprites, as soon as every one of those sprites has been set off drawing, you can start drawing the next row, and as soon as it gets down to there, it'll start drawing them. So that's that's how you create these big blocks of kind of moving things. It's quite common in boss bosses throughout many games. Again, the first time I saw it was in Turrican. Um the, the big fist that, that slams down. Really good example of, of how to do that kind of sprite multiplexing. Um, but yeah, actually, well, no, the, the second biggest thing is that creature's uh, boss um, on the on the bug level. The biggest one I've seen was the uh, Turrican bot end level boss for I think it was level two, three. It was like a huge, probably about four or five screens high, um, kind of some weird robot creature thing that would slam into the wall and then move up and down, and claws would come out of it and stuff. And that was just tons and tons of multiplex sprites in a list. And every time a bit of it went off the top of the screen, a new set of sprites would appear at the bottom. Um, and it was very cleverly done because it used. Um, it used symmetry to reduce the number of spikes it needed, so the the whole thing was symmetrical. So actually, it was only half the size in terms of art assets, and probably a lot of those sprites were reused in different places. Um, but by mirroring it, mirroring it, they could just, you know, make a really big thing with not, not that many sprites. Um, okay, that's on a little bit. Um, all right, let's have a look at how, how that's working there. I would assume that this is sprites being shifted left and right. It might not be. It might just be that the sprites look like that. But actually, can you shift a sprite? Yeah, you can shift a sprite left and right. Because um, you can create. Yeah, because again, on the on my rewind on dock, I do the same on dock to make him ripple with the rewind. So. I am going to attempt Haze. I am seriously going to attempt to complete that game. If I have to play it every week for the next year, I am going to complete that game without cheats. Continues are allowed, but cheats, no. Because continues are an important part of the game. There's one thing I did notice on the PC Engine version is it's a lot easier to pick up credits. A lot easier. They appear way more often um, than they do with um, the Amiga version. And actually, the Amiga version seems to have some glitches on some levels. So the level where um, you've got to keep firing water down that kind of track to get all the triangles. On the Amiga version, the triangles get out of there very quickly. But on the Parasol on the um, PC Engine version, it takes a lot longer for them to find their way out. So yeah, I mean, w why they needed to do that? It's such a hard game anyway. Um, all right, let's have a look. See what's going on here. It's not sprites. It's text, and oh, they're just randomly setting the scroll value. So the scroll, like we saw with the water effect on on um, on Ugg, they're doing the same thing with this. 
But instead of doing it in a smooth curve, they're just randomly picking positions across there. Um, the stars in the background are all sprites, I guess so that they can be animated nice and easily without having to scroll any of the text. Um, I'm not sure why there is text down here, um, but either way, once you go past this, the star set changes and you don't see it anyway. So that must be text as well, that's just going to be, yeah. Text. Uh, interestingly though it doesn't fit it's a, it's a slightly bigger font it's not a 2x2 two two font it's not a 1x1 one one font it's like a 1.2 by 1 font one font it's a little bit bigger than normal characters but it gives it a nice look actually it gives it an unusual look because you're not used to seeing fonts that size so it's a simple thing to do but it looks quite nice You can see the colour fades, we've gone through colour ramps before. Um, you just very quickly change the colours through a, a set of kind of increasing luma values. Right, that, that, that nice kind of ramp effect makes it look like things are fading in. Unfortunately we don't have alpha on the Commodore 64. The best you can do is create these colour ramps to try and blend back to black. Okay, let's have a look at how this has been done. So pause again. Um, I don't know what to guess here. I'm I'm gonna guess it's a mix of sprites and characters. I'm, I'm not entirely sure though. So I know it's ne neither. Ah, okay. So this is basically some raster splits down the screen. Uh, you can kind of see where they are on here actually. Um, that do two things. They change the colours. Uh, just just the background color looking at this if you look at d021 up here it goes from black to blue brown um, but also the X scroll here is also shifting um, for each one as well but it looks like they're shifting more than one character across so I imagine there's also uh, there's also a character set change as they move move around. Yeah, the, the four thousand. The character set is moving around, um, and that allows you to see how. The, the way this will work is you have a character set, and if you draw all the clouds, let's go back to the main screen. If you draw, you just imagine this row of blue clouds here. So you have a character set that just draws these blue clouds, and then if you create exactly the same character set but you shift all the characters across so they're moved across by uh, one character so if you were then to switch the character set you would essentially shift the whole thing by eight pixels if you do that over like eight character sets you can now move those clouds 64 pixels in either direction you combine that with the x scroll that allows you to essentially scroll things by 64 pixels in either direction uh, without actually shifting anything uh, in memory, all, all you're doing is, is switching character sets over. Um, it's used for a really nice effect here. Usually what you'll see is you'll see um, a logo. You'll probably see it on game intros when you when you load up a, a trainer or something. You'll see a large logo and it will do a wobble, kind of like the water effect on UG, but whereas the water effect on UG can only do 8 pixels total uh, from left to right. Um, by switching the character set, you can increase that by another 8, and another 8, and another 8. So what they do with these logos is they draw the same logo, shifted 6 or 7 times, and then the whole thing can kind of move huge amounts across the screen, and you get that kind of wobble effect. It's called, um, what's it called? It's called Tech Tech, is what they call it. Uh, I'm going to put it in here. Tech Tech. Um, quite a common effect, and it's... Uh, used a really, really nice effect here actually I like it by using this dithering uh, they create lots of different shades of um, lots of different shades of the uh, the colors as they go up which creates a nice effect as well so they're using a color ramp here but they're also using dithering um, you know, different character sets with different dithering in as well um, kind of cool 
So this is looks like just a normal scroller actually. It doesn't look like anything particularly special. Uh, let's look. This is a high res bitmap with a couple of sprites at the top. Um, yeah, and it's just scrolling. Really not. So they're using the Y scroll to scroll it smoothly. Um, and then they're copying data as it goes up. It looks like they're using some sprites to fix some of the color clashes. So if I move the, the cursor off, you can see how the color clashes where the cloud is here. Um, and yet it's black here. So they're using sprites to kind of hide those clashes. Um, give it the effect that it's a lot smoother on, on here. So you can see these edges are nice and smooth. There's no color clash at the edges here. Where normally there would be because you can't in high res mode you can't have two colors in one block um, but this allows them to kind of hide those things as well kind of cool um, but this is just uh, I'm guessing this is a, well yeah you can see it there it's unrolled code um, so they're using unrolled code to smoothly move this uh, bitmap up one row at a time probably every other frame or something like that um, and maybe on a double buffer as well uh, let's actually check that I think it probably is if we look at the bitmap here it's E00 um, I don't know it's also not double buffered interesting uh, the char set is changing um, various points on the screen so I'm not sure how that works um, oh no they are double buffered it's just I locked it you see it was flicking between two bitmaps so so what they do is they've got let me pause that before it anymore they've got um eight pixels to scroll and then after the eight pixel they need to copy everything up up the screen um with bitmap data uh, that's a lot of time you can just about scroll if you unroll all the code you can just about scroll the screen and the color maybe not quite everything but you can definitely scroll just the screen or just the color so what you do when you double buffer is you create um, you create the bitmap that you see on the screen and then in during the time it takes to scroll those eight pixels you copy maybe a quarter of the bitmap uh, shifted up by a little bit to your off-screen buffer you do that quarter of each frame and then when it's ready to copy up you switch the buffers and then all you need to do is redraw the colors across the screen and that's it um, did you say you can't double buffer because you can double buffer uh, but you can't double buffer colors so you can double buffer the screens but the the color ram is always going to be in the same place so the advantage of, of, of double buffering means that you don't have to copy both screen ram and color ram at the same time um, before before it updates you can do the you can do you can split the screen copy over a couple of frames because you're drawing it off screen and then you can just flick to quickly switch that screen in and then all you have to do is copy the color ram you imagine the color um to do an entire screen you need to, to load a value and store a value at a thousand different locations loading a value from a memory address takes four cycles storing a value at a memory address takes four cycles if you use a fully unrolled loop that's eight thousand cycles to go down this entire screen uh, each row is about 63 cycles. Uh, if you ignore bad lines, um, that gives you roughly uh, roughly around about 500 cycles per character line, and there's 25 lines. So you need need about 40 lines worth. Um, just, no, that can't be right. Hang on, 563 times 5 no, times 8, 480, 500. Times 25. I'm not. I'm not working this out right. Am I in my head? Right. 500 times 25. Oh yeah, you can. So you can you can scroll you can scroll the entire color ram in the time it takes to do it if you unroll everything. In the beat. So you can do it kind of. If the rass is here, you can start scrolling just behind it. Um, so by the time you get to the bottom whole color ram has changed and by the time the rat comes back around it's it's done again you do a quick buffer swap and everything's fine um this screen's a bit odd there's a lot of weird stuff going on here um sure what's going on i think it's it might be an um 
what do they call it? An interlaced, FLI interlaced, or whatever it is. Because uh, it seems to be changing quite often. Like every line is changing. See things moving around a lot. Uh, and there's sprites overlaid on it as well. So this is probably how they're getting this high res image up here. So I think it's called FLI. Uh, anyone on chat, chat knows what it's called or knows better if this is what it is or not, let me know. Um, but essentially what they're doing is every line they're changing the values for uh, colors and some data on that line which means they're not limited to three colors in any block and about three colors in a background color in any block they're limited to three colors in a background color on a line so you can essentially you can get all the colors in one block and then if you overlay sprites over the top of it as well you can use high res you can use high res sprites on top of a multicolor bitmap with almost unlimited colors um, and you get something like this what do i mean by unrolling everything so if you imagine doing um if you've got a piece of code like this uh, let me just save this as as something uh, i'll save it as test.asm if, if you've got a piece of code where you you're doing a loop um, and you want to load a value from uh, the screen and store it somewhere else on the screen. So say we're just shifting stuff in memory um, and we're just going to shift 100 bytes of memory. Uh, well, let's, let's, let's do 256 bytes. So it's a very, very simple loop. It's copying 256 bytes from the start of screen space to 512 bytes ahead. So this is quite small. This this piece of code is small. This is you know two bytes here, uh, three bytes here, three bytes here, uh, one byte here, and two bytes here. So this is taking up uh, eleven bytes. And in terms of cycles, this is taking. If we just ignore, um, well no, let's let's do the cycles as well. So I think this is two cycles. I think this is four, five if you cross a boundary, but we're not, so let's call it four. And that's four as well, that's two, and that will be three every time except the last one. So if we ignore this this part here, this is happening 256 times. So this is eight, 10, 13. So the total cycle for this is 13 times 256 plus two. Um, that's how many cycles this is taking. So what unrolling does, it lets you do the same thing, but instead of instead of using this operator, in fact, I think that might be five, not not four. I think that's five. Let me just check. Accumulator text. No, it's it's four. It's fine. It's that one that's five. So that one's five. That one's four. Um, so it's actually 14 times 256. So what you can do instead is you can, instead of using this, these two commands, which take five cycles, instead of using these two, which take nine, and instead of using that one, which take two, this one doesn't really max, it only happens once, but these ones take five cycles. So instead of doing that, you could do this instead. And so on which obviously would take a long time to type out but what you can do um, well let me show let me show you why this is good right so in terms of memory this is going to take more memory up because this is two bytes two bytes and that's going to be multiplied by 256 so in terms of memory it's now taking up instead of the 11 bytes whatever it was it's now taking up 1k it's taking up 1000 1000 bytes however in terms of cycles it's now only taking eight cycles per element. So you've now kind of halved the amount of time that this, this takes to do at the cost of some memory. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, three bytes. So it's even more, it's like one and a half kilobytes. Um, so you've now gone from 14 cycles per iteration of the loop um, down to eight cycles per iteration of the loop. I, I think it's four. So I always have to check these things because um 
remembering how many cycles something is is not the easy thing to remember. Um, it is indeed four, I thought so. Yes, four for both. So, you know, you've almost half the amount of time that it takes to do this, and that's called unrolling a loop. Um, obviously, typing that in in your code is going to take forever. So what KickAssembler very handily lets you do um, is use kind of JavaScript style constructs. Um, oh, well, that hasn't. Okay, that should have gone red. I don't know why it hasn't. Maybe I need to say, there we go. Uh, so you can you can use JavaScript. If you put a dot in front of a, it usually means it's some kind of kick assembler specific piece of code. Uh, and if you use JavaScript, C, Java, anything like that, you will have seen code like this before. Um, so you can create a loop like this. And then what you can do is inside the loop, you can do And that does exactly what what we had in the unrolled loop. At compile time, at assembly time, what this does is it, it runs this loop and it generates the code for this. So it goes, okay, first iteration of the loop is that and that second iteration of the loop is that. So it's creating exactly the same code. It's still taking up the same amount of memory. And it's still taking up the one and a half K, but we're now typing it in four lines. So it's a very quick way uh, a quick way to to make these uh, unrolled loops and speed code and you'll see that a lot in demos um, because obviously if you're trying to do these crazy effects where you're doing lots and lots of stuff um, then then you don't want to be wasting you know half of your time in a loop when you could be using memory because in, in demos memory isn't as important you can just load the next demo in over everything else um, yeah um, I think that's probably about it because I, I need to I need to start thinking about going to sleep because I have got work in the morning. Um, so I'm going to call it a night here. Um, as I say, I will be doing a stream on Saturday. I'm hoping it will start half nine. If not, it won't be too much later. I will work through um, the changes I've done, the optimizations I've done to the game this week. I haven't added anything new. I've just kind of shuffled things around a little bit and tried to make the code as quick as possible. Um, it's all just been around those those software sprites. But I'll explain what I've done there. I'll explain the optimizations. I'll talk everyone through uh, what the optimizations are doing, um, what the cost is of those optimizations, because it's a similar sort of thing. I'm using I'm using chunks of memory, um, which I'm uh, filling with a routine at the beginning, so I don't have to use it in the cartridge uh, to save speed later on to make things quicker. Um, and then hopefully we can start looking at some other element of the game. I'm not sure what yet. We'll have to see what we get. Um, and then after the stream, I'm going to play some Parasol Stars. So it could be another 5 a.m. in the morning finish uh, for those that stick around. Um, either way, I will be playing Parasol Stars, whether it's on the GPD XD Plus or it's on the new PC engine. It arrives in time. As I say, I don't think it will. So thanks a lot, everybody who's joined tonight. Um, Thank you for all the bits that you've been <laughs> quite crazily pasting in the uh, in the chat constantly. Uh, thank you for all the subs. Thank you for the follows. Thank you for the raid as well, Hayes. And uh, thank you, Amiga Bill, for the raid. And I'll see you guys on Saturday. Um, let's find someone to raid. Any suggestions, guys? Uh, oh, Zork's there. It's got to be Zork, hasn't it, really? I guess. Okay, let me just turn my sound down a little bit so I can turn the chat on. Let's get in the right channel. Let's raid Zork. Not work. I have to do it from. Oh no, there we go. Okay, so I'll see you all guys on Saturday. Take care, guys.